Hello? Is it working? Hello? Yay! <laughs> it's working. Okay. Um, sorry. I accidentally went live last night for 10 seconds, so I thought it would work today, and it didn't clearly. So I switched my computer from my like big one to my MacBook, and now it's working. I don't I don't know why. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you guys for coming. I can't believe how many of you are coming. I'm so happy. Thank you. Thank you, Audio. Thank you, Brian, for the 50K. Congrats. Yay. <laughs> I'm so happy. Ah. Oh, thank you, Kisti. Thank you, everyone. I'll be honest. I just woke up 30 minutes ago. So I'm still drinking my coffee. But thank you for coming, everyone. Thank you. Average bot, thank you, Spiffy. Thank you, everyone. Yay! Oh, you're so nice. Yay, is there a lag on this? I don't actually know how to live stream. Um, let's see, is there? Oh, my hair looks healthy. Thank you, but actually I have a hair appointment today after this, because I think it's dying here, it's dying. Okay, great. Oh, no lag. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, Beck. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you, Colin. So yesterday, during, <laughs> so yesterday I went to the Depa Chica, which is like a underground mall, not department store. It's like a food hall, I guess is what you could call it. And I bought a cake, <laughs> uh, like a big cake, like, um, and I, and she asked if like, I wanted to write happy birthday or something on it. And I was like, yeah, can you write congratulations 50? Because I didn't want to say like 50 K or anything like that. Cause it was too embarrassing, but I didn't want to say like 50 years old. Cause obviously that's not what's happening here. So it just says like, omerito goju, like congrats 50 on it. <laughs> And yeah, actually, I never buy cakes for myself. I don't think I bought a cake. I don't think I've had cake on my birthday even in years. But I decided to splurge. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Oh, you're my people. Yeah, you're my people. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I'm going to get the cake. I think we should get the cake. Um, I did get candles. So... One, one second, it's in the fridge. Okay, we have the cake. Look at it, isn't it cute? I love Japanese food hauls, they're so cute. So here's the candles, they were free. <laughs> Um, I'm scared to open this. How do I open this? Oh, Nicole, you've been watching since 2022. Thank you. Oh my God, 2022. I feel like it was just yesterday, but it was two years ago. <laughs> okay, maybe I should move the camera. Here, you can see my laptop that I'm streaming from because my real computer isn't working. <laughs> Wait, come on, come on. Should I get scissors? I know Japanese packaging is next level. Okay, tell me how much you think this cost. Tell me how much you think it cost. Because I was very pleasantly surprised. Okay, wait, it's time to bring out, look at these. These are mini scissors they sell in Japan. It's like you could like keep it in your stationary thing. See, it's just, it's so cute. All right, let's open it like this. And then you just put it back in. 
All right, we have guesses for $20, $60, 2,600 yen, $55, $40, 25, 3,000. I'll put it on the ground. So this cake was 2,600 yen, about what, $17, $18? Oh, there's still more tape. Okay, it's like not on the table because the laptop's there. Okay, okay, we're gonna open it. Okay, wait, there's more tape. Oh my gosh. I hope it didn't get ruined. I did not buy their special bag. Okay, okay, it's time, it's time. Okay, da 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 da. Ah, oh, you can't see the words, wait. I'll put it on the garbage. Ah, ah. Yay! Yay! <laughs> 50 omerito. Congrats on 50. I think she thought I was crazy for asking for this. Or like I didn't know Japanese. Yay. So I only like chocolate cake. Well, no, I'll eat any cake, but chocolate cake's my favorite. Yay, thank you all for the congrats. Yeah, it looks really good. So I think we need to light the candles now. I wish you could see my face. I could just do this. <laughs> okay, let's see. What should we sing? We can't sing happy birthday. Okay, I don't like how it's actually not on the table. Hold on. This is insane. Um, let's see. Okay, that's a bit better. Don't catch your hair on fire. Well, I'm gonna get it cut anyway. Let's see, I think one here, right? One here. Wait, I can only use five. Well, we have to use the pink one. Yes, good job. Good job for who guessed it correctly. Oh, hi, Chanty. Thank you for coming. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Pink. We need a pink one. And then we need a red one. That's four. And then let's do blue. Look at that. Yay. We love Kogi Moon because of you. Yeah, you do. Look, this is Kogi Moon. Um, Kogi Moon. <laughs> you already know that. You already know what I have. All right. We need a lighter. Hold on. Lighter, lighter, lighter. Yay. Okay. I wish I had a stand to put this on. No, let's not risk fate. Okay. I'm just gonna hold it. Okay. Will fire get me demonetized? It's not monetized the stream actually, it doesn't matter. I can do what I want. Okay, everyone, let's sing. Let's sing. Uh, what do we do? Um, um, happy 50k to me. <laughs> what do we do? Um, happy, happy. Oh, yeah. Who said, who said, okay. Happy 50k to Allison. Happy 50k to Allison. Happy 50K to Allison. Happy 50K to us. Because it's all of us. It's a group effort. I couldn't have gotten this far without everyone. So thank you so much. Ready? Let's all make a wish. Everyone make a wish. Oh, no. Yay! 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 Oh, that smells like smoke. We did it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the happy 50Ks. 
Yay, 50K friends, that's right. And 100K is next. Let's go. Let's go team, we're gonna make it happen. Why not? Why not? <laughs> okay, let's cut it. Oh, there's over 100 people here, thank you for coming. <laughs> Okay, now I need a knife. I don't, why don't I prep beforehand? I don't know. Uh oh. back. Thank you for waiting. Oh, Jonas, thank you for coming from Los Angeles. I'm glad you had a good trip. All right, I have a plate and I have a fork and I have a very intense knife because all my normal knives are dirty. All right, let's Okay. Oh, wait. Are you supposed to take out the candles? I think so. Wait, are they hot? I don't know how... I don't have anything works in life. <laughs> okay. What do I do with them? Here. Here. Let's put it here. This is my first meal of the day. <laughs> it is 1220 in Japan right now, by the way. So, this is great. Okay, good job candles. Yay, if you're new, I bought this cake at the basement food store hall thing in Shibuya yesterday. It's 9.20 in Canada. Yeah, sorry about the time zone thing. I don't know how to do math and there's no good time zone that everyone can join unless I woke up like at 8 a.m. And it's just not gonna happen. Is this edible? I think it is. Should I eat it? Wait, let's eat it. Let's try to eat it. It's 421 and you're joining me? Thank you. 2.20 p.m., that's pretty good. Oh. Come on camera. 8 p.m. in LA, 10.21 in Jamaica. 3.20 in the UK, yeah, see, I'm sorry, UK people. I kind of I kind of ruined it for Europe. <laughs> 11.21 in Boston, 8.21 in San Diego. All right, let's eat it. Yeah, you're right. You're right, let's eat it. Okay, I'm gonna eat the happy congrats 50 thing. I, it's gotta be edible, right? Hmm. I think it's fondant. <laughs> okay, it's fine. It's edible. It's edible. Okay, I'm gonna put that on the side. <laughs> All right, let's cut into the cake. Oh, thank you, Colin, for staying up till 3.20. I'm sorry. <laughs> what do you do about these fruits? Look, they still have the green thing on it. Okay, let's see. Okay, ish. Maybe I should have moved this actually out of the box, but it's too late. We're just doing it. Okay. I usually make other people cut the cakes because I don't know what I'm doing. I guess I'll keep that. Yeah, and then we'll cut it like this. Is this too big of a slice? Well, it's just me who's gonna eat it in the end. I wish I could give you some. Come on, come on. Oh God, I'm scared it's gonna fall off. Ah, 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 ah. Okay, we got it. What should I do with this? Okay, I'm gonna move this. Somewhere. I'll just put it on my bed. All 
All right, I'm back. Thank you for coming, Jasmine. Thank you for coming, everyone. We have our 50K cake. Let's try to eat it. Also, okay, wait. So what flavor is this? I don't know. Uh, I think it was chocolate berry ganache or something. I don't know. I just kind of saw the outside and I thought it looked good. <laughs> All right, let's try it. And yeah, also I said this was a Q&A, so you can ask me questions. Sorry if I miss it. Um, the, the monitor is now in a much weirder place than I thought it would be. Let's try. Hmm. There's like a, a crunchy layer, and then like a cake layer, and then like a strawberry mousse layer, and then like a chocolate mousse shell. I don't know. Ah! Stop falling on me! Okay. <laughs> what did you study for your master's? Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, I studied information studies. <laughs> uh, by that, I don't mean computers. <laughs> I mean, like, it was more like a media and media. I don't know, stuff like that. Uh, if I say information studies, people are like, IT or AI or something. No, no, it wasn't like that. Um, what's the coldest temperature I've experienced in Japan? Probably Hokkaido, Hokkaido Snow Festival. I went in 2019, before COVID, before YouTube, all that. Uh, I went with my friend, Sam, whose partner I think is in the chat. <laughs> so thanks for coming. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was really cold at night, but it's not like, not like Russia cold or something. I don't know. It was like in Fahrenheit, maybe at night it was like negative or not negative. It was like 10 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know. Um, thank you, Maposh. Maposh. I don't know how to say it. Uh, now that you work for a Japanese company, is it normal to have a nine to five work day? So, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so my company, I work from 10 to 7. That's like the normal work day. Sometimes it is like, sometimes like I'll go in later if I have to stay till like later for an event or something. But I think most people will work like 9 to 6 or 10 to 7, 8 to 5, like that kind of hours. Some people work less, don't get me wrong, like America and all that. But yeah. Do I have travel plans this year outside of Japan? Yes, well, I don't know. I try to go home for Christmas every year, but that's not that fun. But I do, I, I really wanna go outside of Japan somewhere this year, I think, I don't know. At least maybe Korea or Taiwan or something I'm thinking, but we'll see. Cause I was kind of trapped in Japan for three years cause of COVID, like I couldn't leave that easily. Was my master's degree useful? Um, <laughs> yes, yes in Japan. Um, but that's more cause like I went to the University of Tokyo which is like a big, like, I don't know. It's like if you say you went to Harvard in America like that name alone does a lot, I guess. It's, it's kind of complex. <laughs> what is my favorite place to go in my free time? Hmm. I don't know. I feel like I don't have much free time lately. Uh, I, I like, not like the city city areas that much, but like Shimokitazawa or Kichijoji, that kind of vibe more. It's like a bit more residential-y with like a cool vibe. Sam's partner's in the chat. <laughs> Hi, Nathan. <laughs> um... What kind of work do you do? And were you hired in the US or while living in Japan? So I've lived in Japan now for <laughs> six years this summer. Oh my God. So I was hired in Japan. Uh, I moved here in 2018 to teach English. I, yeah. 
And right now I work in, I don't know, my job's kind of complex because, so in Japan, something I didn't really expect about Japanese companies until I started really working at them and like living here is that if you're hired at like a normal-ish Japanese company, your job is going to be like a lot of things. Like you're not just going to do like one thing. Like you're not only going to focus on one thing. You're probably going to be asked to kind of do whatever. And that also means like employees are expected to do things in America. You would never like dream of asking them. Like we have to take out the trash. We have to clean the desks and stuff. We have to like do this kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, my job is like, I don't know, like project management, event planning kind of thing. Uh, I think work's going pretty good. I like all my coworkers a lot. So I think I'm really lucky for that. Aloha from Hawaii. Thank you. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of questions now. Wait. Ah! <laughs> Wait. Uh, what are some of the hardest parts of getting established in Japan? Um, I think you just have to come and just do it. Like, <laughs> you just kind of have to take a job that's maybe not exactly what you want. You have to take a house that's not exactly what you want. And, you know, just kind of chug along for a year or two. And then after that, you can transition much easier. I don't know. That's not really <laughs> great advice, but that's, that's what you have to do. Would I prefer to always live in an apartment or move into a house? Um, so as long as I live alone, I do not want a house for <laughs> obvious reasons. I like apartments for various reasons. My current one has a garbage room, which is amazing. And I don't think I could move to an apartment without one now. Cause like, you know, the trash system in Japan's a bit complex as you've probably heard. So like, there's like a room in the basement here where I just like can separate everything into the areas they have. And then like the manager or whatever takes it out on the proper days. So I don't even have to worry about it. It's great. But yeah, I like apartments for now, at least at this stage in my life. And I can't imagine the next stage. So <laughs> have I been to Okinawa? Yes, I love Okinawa. I went to Naha and like Nago area on the main island um, two summers ago. Oh my God, time is going so fast, you guys. <laughs> I really want to go back again. Maybe I can go back this year. Best afternoon tea in Tokyo. That's a hard one. So afternoon teas here, they change seasonally. So it's hard to say. I'd really say you're probably safe at any of the upper class. I don't know. What's the word? Like higher expensive hotels like the Amon or Four Seasons. They're all very good. Would you suggest Fujinomiya? What was your favorite place there? I'll be there because your video inspired us. Oh, yay, I'm happy. No, I really did like it. Um, Cause I, everyone goes to Kawaguchiko. It's great, don't get me wrong. Oh, can you hear that motorcycle? Okay. Kawaguchiko is great, but there's so many tourists now. Oh my God. I went last fall, it's so many tourists now. So yeah, Fujinomiya is really good for not having that and I really liked the um big red shrine what was it called the Sengen shrine maybe I'm sorry I can't remember the name of it but it was like the big red shrine and it was like near uh yakisoba stuff please watch the video again <laughs> but no it's really good especially if you actually want to like talk to local people or something just just talk to people around there they're very nice they're very nice how about Hawaii of course, I want to go to Hawaii. <laughs> Have you met other YouTubers in Japan, like Sharla? Wait, should I bring out my deep lore? <laughs> wait, um, okay. So, wait. so when I came and studied abroad in 2016 in college, back when I was living in America, I, I was like 20. And Sharla and Taylor had this sleepover event. This is like, we're reaching in the archives right now. So they had this sleepover event and I went. <laughs> Wait, do I have the photo? Wait, it's probably on my Facebook. 
So that was the first time I met. But that was like in the peak era of J vlogging. Now I'm like in the declining era or something, I guess. I don't know. That's what people say. Uh, how do I find this photo? Wait. Um, God, do I just scroll all the way back? All right, we're in 2020. So this is only on Facebook, which I don't update now, but it's great for this kind of stuff. Okay, wait. Okay, 2018. Come on. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right, where is it? Where is it? Come on. Come on. I did so much stuff when I studied abroad. Wow. Where's the photo? Come on. Oh, I got it. I got it, you guys. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> can you can you see it? Wait, so this is 2016. <laughs> Obviously, I'm the middle one. This is back when Taylor was into the like dolly look, and then there's Sharla. Wait. Yeah, it was it was like a wait. Come on, focus. Come on. Yeah, it was like a sleepover thing in the YouTube headquarter thing. Yeah, this was 2016. <laughs> yeah, this is like vintage now, I know. I think, I guess I took this on like my iPhone, what was it, back then, 5S or something. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I met them, and then I met a few other recent people, but not like... I met like few recent people. I don't know, okay. <laughs> but they're more like my friends. I don't view them like as YouTubers, so I don't know. Um, okay, let's go back. Um, ooh, yeah, I do wanna go to Korea. Thank you. Um, my favorite products from Daiso, that's just the whole store. That's just the whole store. <laughs> the worst date I've been on. <laughs> <laughs> Should I give you more lore? Uh, oh, honestly, a sleigh about Charlotte Taylor. Thank you. I know. That was a lottery. I won that lottery. Um, anyway, what was I saying? Wait. Wait, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, my worst date. My worst date. Um, let's think. Okay, it's got to be... This wasn't... I don't know. I've been on a lot of dates in Japan that were, like, just kind of, like, iffy. Or like he said some like one or two really weird things that just ruined it. And I haven't been dating lately because I just I'm too busy. Um but okay, I went on this one date with this guy and it was going really well. We were like on date number three. And date number three, like in Japan, is like when you're supposed to kind of it's like kind of like the limit. Like you kind of decide if you're gonna like keep dating or like not, <laughs> basically. So it was date three. Yeah, it was date three. And then, I don't know, I guess he got too comfortable around me. or I don't know. Um, and he, star okay. he started talking about how when he went to Vietnam and he went to strip clubs and made a lady friend and how he had such a good time. We were drinking, but... Yeah, <laughs> uh, and then yeah, and then he was like, "Oh yeah, if we ever go, we could, I could introduce you." Like, what? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? So, yeah, that was pretty bad. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't see him again after that, and it got very awkward. Yeah, keep that to yourself. Keep that to yourself. On date three, that's not a date three topic. No. So yeah, <laughs> that was a mess. And then I also went on a date with a guy who was like talking about, this was date one with this guy. And he was like, do you want kids? And I was like, I don't know. And then he was like, well, I want a boy and a girl. I need a boy because we have to play catch. I have this dream of playing catch with a son. I'm like, okay, you could do that with like a girl. And then he was like, 
So that didn't go any further. <laughs> yeah, these were both Japanese men. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let me scroll back up. Sorry, I went. Uh, so that's why I'm not dating right now. Um, I'm oh, sorry. I think I missed some. I think they disappeared. What are your thoughts on Osaka? So you're either an Osaka person or you're a Tokyo person. Uh, I'm a Tokyo person. I think Osaka is great actually to live in, but it, Tokyo is just, it's so much easier to live in Tokyo as not just a foreigner, but like if you want to progress in your career, you have to, you almost have to live in Tokyo. You don't, you don't have to, but you know, like that's why a lot of big YouTubers too are moving here lately. Like Sharla and Chris, I think just moved here, but even outside of YouTube, like just in general, there's so many more opportunities here for like international stuff or like global companies, but Osaka is a really great vibe. And I think the people are really nice and I like to go. I haven't been in a while, but it's good. It's really good. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, Willis, thank you for watching. Uh, Gigi Bay asked, <laughs> if you go any, if you could live anywhere in Japan other than Tokyo, where would you go? So maybe, I don't know, I might be insane. Maybe Sapporo or Kyoto, Kyoto or Sapporo, no, Fukuoka. Okay, Kyoto, Sapporo, Fukuoka. I think are the top three cities I'd be interested in living in outside of Tokyo for various reasons. I think I'd freeze to death in Sapporo, but the summers are very nice. So, uh, and I, Fukuoka is supposed to be like one of the most, or like the most desirable city to live in, in Japan or something like that. I really have to go again. I haven't been in years, 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 almost a decade. Um, but I did used to live uh, in many different places. So I've lived in Saga Prefecture before, I've lived in Gifu Prefecture before, and I've lived in Chiba Prefecture before moving to Tokyo. Okay, now I'm on all the comments where you guys are like dissing the guy I was talking about. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Some things you should just not say. If he never said that, who knows where we'd be right now. Uh, okay. Uh, do you get many chances to use your Japanese language school school's skills? Yes. Wait, I need a coffee. Hold on. Um, yes. Okay. So actually the company I work at is like 95% Japanese people. It's a Japanese company. My team is more international, but like the company overall is Japanese. So I use it at work for that kind of stuff. And, mm, but okay. I'd say if you like actually want to use your Japanese language skills and like really get better, you got to move to the countryside or work a job where you don't need English or you don't use English or whatever. But yeah, I, I do use Japanese like a lot because of the company I work for because I know a lot of people here who work for like English speaking companies so then their Japanese level like kind of goes down or stagnates which is like fine and <laughs> way more comfortable of a working environment in a lot of aspects I think but yeah it's it's a trade-off yeah they moved from Sendai yeah yeah see I don't I feel like in the past Two years? I feel like a lot of people have been moving to Tokyo. Um, have I watched the projection show? No. No, I'm lazy. You guys, I'm lazy. Uh, <laughs> if it's a nighttime activity, it's hard to get me out for it. <laughs> What's the most random and obscure thing you've bought since I've lived in Japan? 
I don't know. I think the most random things are just all the garbage I pick up. That's <laughs> like, uh, like this. Wait, guys. Wait, I haven't released the video. I was editing it last night. Okay, this is a preview. I went to a Conan exhibition um, in February. Okay, I might break it by picking it up. I bought this. <laughs> it's like, what? what is this thing? It's huge. Um, so I didn't know it was this big when I bought it. Like, I had to, like, pre-order it online or something. Um, so now I just have this giant thing. Uh, it's like everyone, I like it, but it's like, I thought it'd be half size. Let me put it back. You'll, you'll see more in the video. You'll see more. Just this kind of random stuff. It's like everywhere. Um, do I get recognized in public? Sometimes. Thank you if you've ever said hi. Sometimes I do. Uh, it's not like, it's not like a huge amount of people or anything. You know, but yeah, please do say hi, please. Uh, it's fine, usually. Uh, if I look angry while I'm walking, it's just that's just my face when I'm when I'm not talking to someone. I just look mean. Sorry. What do you recommend for learning conversational Japanese? I think if you're like already at the level where you've like done the basics, then you just gotta like expose yourself to content in Japanese. That's like the best study resource or just talking to people. But other than that, yeah. So like if you're, if you don't like any Japanese friends or whatever, then like hello talk or italki or whatever they're called, these kind of things I think would be worth looking into. Cause you can only do so much self-studying and at least for me, without like burning out. <laughs> Are you a cat or a dog person? Okay, I'm a dog person. Should I bring out the sad lore? Wait. I'm, I'm at my fridge. Hold on. Hold on. My my doggy, oh focus! This is Chip. Isn't he cute? He's perfect. Um, he died. What was it? Two years ago? Now maybe? He was old. He was like, okay, I already forgot. He was like sixteen or something. Mom, sorry. Uh, yeah, Chip. His name was Chip. I love him. I named him Chip. Uh, I got him when I was like ten. Because I thought he looked like a chocolate chocolate chip cookie. He was more brown back then. Yeah, I love dogs. I really love dogs. And I'd love to get a Pomeranian. That's my dream. My dream dog. I like cats too. Don't get me wrong. I like cats. But if I had to pick one. Um, did I ever stick with Final Fantasy online? Y yes and no. I I'm on like a month break. But I I'm going to get back into it. I promise. It's just... I just got really busy with work. So yeah. And that main story is really hard to get through. Any new games I'm playing? What am I playing right now? Here, let me look at my computer that would not connect to the live stream for reasons I don't know. Um, no, I want to play the new Final Fantasy uh, re remaster, remake, remake part two, but I don't have a PS5. So I'm going to wait for that to come out. But other than that, I'm mostly in like a, I'm in my, I'm in one of my phases where all I do all day is read manhwa, which are like the Korean vertical web comics. And I'm obsessed with them. <laughs> I go through these phases. I go through phases. Okay. I need to eat some more cake. This is my lunch. Mm. This is a good cake for 25 bucks, 15 bucks. I don't know. Um, is it normal to job hop in Japan? Um, it is now. I think it is now for young people. Um, it's kind of similar to America, but Japan's like a bit late. But, um, 
yeah, for young people, it's common to like not job hop to the extent that it, at least I see online that Americans do because I haven't actually worked full time in America, like at a regular job ever. So I don't really know. But yeah, younger people like under 40, they will move like to companies. Maybe they'll stick it out a bit longer than people do in America. But yeah, like that image of the becoming a say say shine salary man guy person thing i don't know it's like still there and there's definitely still people who do that but and a lot of older people are like that but it's changing and you can do it um let's see oh yeah my doggy i know i know but he lived a good life he was he was fine rip to the king thank you he was he was a king. I've seen, wait, okay. Um, <laughs> you talked about filing taxes for your channel. Um, did you register or declare income for it? And were you still stu student when you did that? All right, I'm not gonna get into a big tax discussion because this is not a fun topic, but I, I just filed my taxes actually this week, this past week, and I paid them. So that deserves another cake. Cause that was hard. Uh, so in Japan, companies like do your taxes for you. And if you come to Japan and work, you probably won't even ever think about it. But yeah, if you do do freelance work, basically, then you have to file on your own. Once you make, I think it's, what is it? 200,000 yen, more than 200,000 yen a year on it or something, something like that. Uh, so I filed for the first time last year. So this was my second time filing. So it, it just depends how much money you make. It's actually not like, it's not like super hard to file. It's, it's like hard if you wanna save money. Like if you wanna like declare a bunch of expenses and stuff. So next year I will get an accountant because <laughs> this year was a bit hard, but I did file and I paid a lot of money. <laughs> I paid a lot of money. This is crazy. I watch you all the time. Welcome to the live stream. Oh my God. There's like almost 150 people here. That's like crazy. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> I feel like I have nothing good to talk about. Um, is there a new favorite food you learned to cook in Japan? Yes, it is. Um, hold on. I'll show you it. I'll show you it. Come on. I love this food. Um, how do I? Okay, so I use this app called Delish, if you're interested. And if you're learning Japanese, it's called Delish Kitchen. And it's like a recipe app. Oh, I have to watch an ad. Hold on, okay. So if you wanna learn about Japanese food or how to make it in Japanese, then this is great. Um, so I make two things a lot. So this is the dish I make when I don't know what to make. It's like, okay, come on. Okay, no, no, no. It's like teriyaki, mayonnaise, pork. And it's so easy to make. It's so good. And I really like it because it uses like, you know, the cupy, cupy, I don't know how to say it, mayonnaise. <laughs> it's good. And then I also like making these kind of roll things, like where you roll a vegetable in a pork thingy. Yeah, I like those. I don't know what it's called. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, okay, hold on. Oh no, I lost my place. I'm sorry. Um, are there thrift and vintage stores in Tokyo? <laughs> What's the price? So there is, there's Shimo Kitazawa and trendy thrift store price. And then there's like actual thrift store prices. So like actual thrift stores are going to be like second street or book off, hard off. These are like cheap like under a thousand yen, under $10 stuff. And then if you go to like, okay, like I love Shimokitazawa, 
in Harajuku and stuff. But if you're trying to get a deal, this isn't it. Because these are like curated vintage stores. I don't know what the word is. Um, and they're expensive. <laughs> they will charge you a lot because they can. So, yeah. But actually, I don't thrift that much because I am big <laughs> in Japan. I'm big, like, in height and in width, I guess. So it's really hard for me to actually find things that fit. Like, pants won't even look at it. In thrift stores, at least. Sweaters and shirts I can find, but... Mm. Final Fantasy is more content in the summer. How am I going to beat it by the summer? <laughs> I've seen horse for sale in a restaurant. Yeah, I've tried that before. Um, bas basashi. It's called. It's like raw horse sashimi. Uh, it's not bad. It's not good either. At least to me, it's, it's like an experience, I guess. I don't know. Uh... Do I have any Nendroids? No, not here. I do have these the very, very controversial Q poskets. I have uh, two of these of Sakura. They're right here. They're super cheap because they're from like the crane games. <laughs> I love Manhua. Thank you. Vertical comics are difficult to understand. I know. Yeah, they are. You get used to it. You get used to it. Um, are you experiencing or seeing a lot of inflation on restaurant prices that they are mentioning thanks to the tourist boom? Um, no, no, the tourist restaurants, maybe, I don't really know. <laughs> I don't know what they're charging, but I think I think maybe you're talking about like Niseko or something. Uh, I did see that a lot on the news, like Japanese news too, about how they were charging tourists like 3,000 yen for like ramen, which is insane, but they can do whatever they want <laughs> at these ski places, honestly. But like normal restaurants, they're like not, maybe they raise the price like a little, but I don't think it's because of tourism, but more because the yen sucks and <laughs> things cost more money. But yeah, yeah, the yin really sucks for me. If if you're a tourist, it's great for you. <laughs> um, how long did it take you to become fluent? I don't know. Ask me again in ten years because I'm still not there. Honest, I don't know. It's like, what is fluent? I guess I could do anything I want here and converse about anything I want, basically. So I guess in some regards, I'm fluent. Like I could go to the government place on my own and whatever but I like can't talk about things smartly like at the level that I wish I could you know what I mean especially at work I get very frustrated because I just I don't I can't think of how to say a lot of things but yeah if it if it's how long I took to become this well I've been studying for 10 years with a lot of breaks in between but <laughs> Yeah, you can probably do it uh, in a few years. Just move here. You have to move here. That That's what, you know, that's where it'll really skyrocket. Do you watch Free Run? Yeah, I'm a, but I'm a few episodes behind, so don't say anything. Uh, I'm really into po Apothecary Diaries. I think that's actually maybe my favorite that I, like, I look forward to because it's easy to watch. And it's good, like exciting. Free Run's very good but I don't want to watch it while I'm eating dinner. Does that make sense? Um, fan club. Yeah. <laughs> Are you still in the ensemble stars? No, I'm sorry. I fell off. And I fell off of Genshin a bit, which is so, it's, I know, I know. I have caught up to uh, Fontaine's story, the Archon quest. I did do all that, but I haven't been playing. I just don't have time honestly, and the payoff isn't what it used to be, if that makes sense. But my favorite Genshin character is going to be Child. <laughs> I'm 
I'm 17 hours ahead of some of you. That's wild. Time is crazy. Well, your brother's in Tokyo. Do you have any snack recommendations? Like the Don, go to like Don Quixote, Donkey, and just buy all the snacks. So my favorite <laughs> chocolatey snack is Kinoko no Yama. Hold on. This is, all right, so this is a Japanese debate. Every Japanese person will have an answer to this question. Are you team mushroom or are you team bamboo? Okay, so hold on, wait. Kinoko no Yama, like Mushroom Mountain, or Takenoko no Sato, like Bamboo Village or something. So you have to pick a side. I'm making you pick. Come on, focus. No, focus. Okay, so we have the Kinoko no Yamas. I'm Kinoko no Yama. I love the mushrooms. I don't like the bamboos. I just don't like them. They're not that good to me. So get these and pick one. <laughs> I like the mushrooms, not to be, not to influence you, but <laughs> what do you think if you tried? Okay, we have some mushrooms in the chat. Thank you. Thank you. Three mushrooms. I like both. Pick one. Kay says Pocky. Kel says Pocky. Yeah. <laughs> okay, every, good, good. Kinoko, everyone's for mushrooms. Thank you. This is a very common debate in Japan. <laughs> I, it's like uh, if you're like Pepsi or Coke, I guess. <laughs> Where did I do the 50K? <laughs> I'd rather die than run. Uh, what's the best way to start learning Japanese? You do, I don't know, <laughs> take a class. Well, for me, it's take a class because I do not have the dil diligence or whatever to actually keep studying. You know what I mean? Like I'll fall off, I'll fall off. I, I think you have to take a class online or in person. Back in my era, back in my day, <laughs> there were no online classes, <laughs> okay? What's a good manga to read if you're learning Japanese? Always start with the kids stuff. And then a famous one is, uh, what was it, Yotsuba? I think, Yotsuba. We always start with things aimed at children. With no magic. <laughs> like daily school setting. That's what you want. Are you in one on the JLPT? Yeah, <laughs> I did pass in one somehow. But it doesn't mean that much. I'm going to be real. I'm so happy I passed it. But because I'm only so happy I passed it because it is really useful in Japan. Like it opens doors to everything, like jobs, even housing. Like I could easily prove I'm fluent, I guess. <laughs> mm. Yummy. I like Digimon. Sorry, I was a Pokemon girl. How was Taylor Swift? It was amazing. Yeah, we did pay for the SS seats, which was the best tier you could get under VIP, but we were at the very back of the section. But we also got them at the last round of sales or whatever. I think they did three or four rounds and we got in at the end. So but yeah, it was a great concert. Howdy, howdy. Team Bamboo, your band. <laughs> Just kidding. Congrats for the 50K subs. Thank you. Bamboo, your band. <laughs> mochi, yeah. Try mochi. If you haven't tried mochi, I love mochi. If you like, come to Japan, you have to try it. And you also have to try red beans, azuki or anko, whatever. I love red beans. I know it sounds weird, but they're sweet and they're delicious. Please trust me. I love them. Yeah, we're the fun guys for mushrooms because they're really good. Um, housing is affected by your proof of language proficiency. This is, <laughs> this is a whole nother can of worms. Yeah, so there's like no discrimination laws. <laughs> 
So uh, they can deny you for being like not Japanese, um, which is insane to me. I, I marginally understand it if they deny you because you can't speak Japanese, depending on the place and all that. But yeah, uh, a lot of places will deny you if you don't speak Japanese. So I did have to prove I could speak Japanese both times I think I've got an apartment. Um, one time like they called to like literally test my ability. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not great. It's not great. It's kind of sad, but what can you do? What can you do? But yeah, my, my previous landlord, I kind of understood why they didn't want someone who couldn't speak Japanese because it was like, like they lived in the building. It was like a small building with like six rooms. So like they want to be able to talk to me. So I, I get it for that stuff. I don't get it for like the big companies that manage these places. I don't, I don't know. It's complicated. It's complicated. Do I like to try the new Starbucks drinks? So not just Starbucks, but like everything in Japan is so seasonal and they turn around so many freaking drinks every time, like every new week, every week there'll be like a new drink at anywhere, any coffee chain or any convenience store. There's so much stuff. You can never keep up, never. I don't play Smash Bros. It's not, I'm just not talented. <laughs> How often do people in Japan drink soda? Like normal. Like maybe a little bit less than America, but like it's very normal. <laughs> I don't actually drink soda. Lore. For no reason other than I don't like carbonated drinks. How much does it cost to see a dentist in Tokyo? So everyone has insurance. Like, I think. Um... The dentist is actually kind of complicated because if you want to see the dentist on most insurance plans, you're going to have to like go maybe multiple times because like they can only see you for like 30 minutes at a time on the insurance covered one. I don't, it's so stupid. Um, so honestly, I pay out of pocket because I don't want to do that. So I pay like, I don't know if you think this is expensive or not, but I pay 10,000 yen, but I go to like a nice dentist who speaks English, because um, I've been going to her since um, before I got like Invisalign kind of thing. So I wanted somebody who spoke English for that, just because I don't know, medical things, I'd like to understand as much as I can. But yeah, it's like 10,000 yen. It's like, I don't know, it's fine. So what's that in USD, like 75 bucks? I don't know, it's like, okay. For my American mind, it's okay, I don't know. Uh, is that expensive in your country? How much do you pay to go to the dentist? I don't actually know how much it should cost. I just pay it. Uh, let me know. Uh, what are my monthly expenses? I kind of want to make a video on this. I want to make a video on this. I'm going to make a video on this. Um, it just depends on your lifestyle and where you live. Like back in Gifu, my rent was $200. $200. My monthly expenses were very low. But in Tokyo, especially now, I live like more central. They're pre it gets pretty high. I could live cheaper. I could, but I don't. Treat yourself. <laughs> You're only single in your 20s once. Have you tried Baldur's Gate 3? I don't know if TNT is your vibe. Yeah, I did Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> Um, I actually, I used to play D&D &D every week for about a year with some friends. Um, but I had to stop when I started working after I graduated um, from grad school because it just didn't, the time didn't work out because like most, half of the party at least was in uh, the U.S. And then a few of us were in Japan. So it just, it wasn't working. But I do like D&D &D, and I wish I could play it again, but... Congrats on reaching 50k subs. Thank you. Do you have any recommendations on where to visit in northern Japan? 
Honestly, I haven't been north that much, but I think a lot of parts of northern Japan are pretty untouched, or not untouched, but like they're untouched compared to Kyoto by foreign tourists. So I really recommend it. Um, I think Aomori Hirosaki is really good. I also enjoyed parts of Fukushima. Um, depends on what, what time you're going to these places. Um, but like Aizu Wakamatsu, Fukushima, Sendai is good for like a chill city-ish kind of trip. I don't know. Uh, I really want to go to Akita. I'm trying to go to Akita because I have not crossed it out. Wait, I have an idea. Look what I have. This is a map of where I've been in Japan. I haven't actually updated it though on uh, a year. So I, I need to update it, but I bought this. This is from Amazon. My friend actually bought it for me. Uh, I think you could find it yourself if you want it, but you just like scratch off where you go. So Akita is as now, cause sorry, it's not updated. Akita is the only place in Tohoku I haven't been yet now. And then I like have barely touched this area because it's so far from Tokyo. And I, I've never been to Shikoku, so I really want to go. And also Kyushu is kind of sad. Yeah, I need to update this map. Um, yeah, I need to go down south, but I, now that I work, it's like, when am I going to do that? So I don't know. It's a lot easier, honestly, to go to Tohoku than it is to go down south from Tokyo, so... Yeah, I want to go to Akita. I want to go to Akita. Nathan, Sam, and you have that map too? Yeah, it's great, right? I think my friend Hannah gave me it. I don't know if you know her. Uh, okay. <laughs> my hands are dusty now. <laughs> um, let me see. Let me see. Where was I? My favorite Pokemon game. I don't know. My first one was Sapphire. So I think that's my favorite of all time. But of the recent games, honestly, I haven't been vibing with them, guys. The vibes are off. The only one I really, really enjoyed lately has been, uh, what was it called? God, the one where you go back in time. I don't know what it was called. Please tell me what it was called. I don't remember. Uh, uh, Arceus. Yeah, that sounds right. I think. Yeah, that was the only one I vibe with lately. I don't know. We'll see how this year goes. Mr. Donuts or Krispy Kreme? I like cake donuts. <laughs> So Mr. Donuts, but I really like Krispy Kreme Donuts too. It's just like, I don't know. I, I won't like go out of my way to buy them. Have you ever bought a traditional Japanese knife? Okay, so, wow, this knife is gonna look rough. Look, it needs to be sharpened. It needs to be cleaned. It needs everything. I'm sorry. I've been abusing it, but I got this really nice knife um, from Seki. Am I going to get demonetized for showing a knife? Or, okay. I, I don't know. It's a knife. <laughs> I got it from Seki and uh, Kifu because I used to live there. And it's like a famous, it used to be famous for sword smithing town. And now they do knives. Okay, I need to put this off camera. <laughs> Stay. Okay. Yeah, it's very nice. And I really need to take better care of it. <laughs> um, okay. It's cheap. Teeth cleaning with fluoride was $430. Americans, how are you alive? Any plan to buy a house? We'll see. <laughs> Can't afford it at all right now. And I'm working towards permanent residency. 
I really want that. I need it before I'm 30. Um, because once you turn 30, they start, um, they start taking away, it's like a point system. So you have to hit like 70 points or 80 points to get permanent residency. But once you turn 30 and then like every five years after that or something, you lose points because they don't want like older people. <laughs> so I need to do it before I'm 30. It's kind of insane. Oh, thank you, Ashton. Oh yeah, I did see the Wakunonaru doll thing on Twitter. <laughs> Any plans for future content? I think I'm struggling right now with trying to balance work in this channel because it's really hard. Um, Cause I work a lot. Uh, I actually worked yesterday on Saturday. Uh, we have to work weekends sometimes. So yeah, I'm, tr I'm really trying to make a better schedule for it. So we'll see. We'll see. That's, that's really my main struggle. So sorry if the uploads are not as consistent as they used to be. Because I used to never miss a week. But now I do. Because it's just impossible sometimes with work. What's the best place to go for good ocean views in Japan? Um, okay. <laughs> so I'm from Florida. So, um, Japanese beaches around the Tokyo area absolutely suck. I'm going to be real. They suck. They're good to look at though. Like I think the area around the Izu Peninsula, Shizuoka, it's really beautiful to look at. To swim is another story. It depends you know, Izu Peninsula is like amazing beaches. Wait, sorry, let me backtrack. Um, there's like amazing beaches. But like the point to get there from Tokyo, all these beaches kind of suck. I guess is what I'm saying. You have to go to Okinawa for good beaches. But yeah, Izu Peninsula. I recommend it. Um... Are the alcoholic beverages or like other coolers there? So Japan is um, a sour country. It's a country of sours. So that's like a type of drink. And Chuhai, it's a Chuhai sour country. Uh, I could go to the convenience store right now and buy some for like a dollar. 150 yen, 200 yen. You can get messed up <laughs> very cheaply here. I don't know if that answered your question, but <laughs> they, and they have them in like every flavor you can think of. What's the best way to book train tickets or reserve seats? Honestly, I would just go in person to the, um, what are they called? Like the window, Madoguchi, the uh, ticket service centers, at like the JR stations, assuming you're talking about JR. And just like basically like handing her your itinerary and your requests like on day one and just booking it all. I mean, you can do it online now, I think, but I'm going to be honest. I've never done it online from abroad. You can do it online, like through Japanese services very easily, but I'm not sure. Please let me know in the comments. Cause I, I don't know. I don't know now. Cause it used to be, you could not book anything online before COVID. So things have changed. Do I plan to live in Japan forever? <laughs> it sounds like something my mom wants to know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I think it could go 50-50. I really like living here right now. But if I think about like when I'm 60, which is insane, I don't know. Like would I want to live in a different country? It's not my native language and all that when I'm old. I don't know. So that's the hard part, because then you have to plan for, you know, I need to plan for retirement, like, now. <laughs> so it's really hard to figure that out. And yeah, I guess we'll just see where life goes. I'm planning on, I'm not leaving this country. I'm not leaving this country at least until I'm 30. Uh, so we have a few years left. Well, actually, it's coming 
closer and closer because I turned 28 this year. <laughs> um, yeah, well, we're going to stay here for a few more years. Don't worry. At least. Maybe forever. I don't know. It looks like a VG tin steel in a Santoku shape. You you can tell that? Wow. I don't know. Honestly. <laughs> Uh, Fina, thank you for the congrats. <clears throat> As a wor woman working in a Japanese company, what do you think career growth looks like? Okay. Um, okay, so <laughs> number one, there's a few things I think that play into this. If you have kids or not, if you don't have kids, you're good. I think you can grow. If you have kids, everything gets so much harder. So much harder. Um, not because of like even just childcare, but like people are gonna look at you differently, I think. Um, but then number two is as a foreigner, this is one of the few good things I guess about being a foreigner is that people don't expect the same things as me or like loop me into the same box or whatever, I think at least <laughs> that they do for like a uh, native Japanese woman, you know what I mean? So I think that's one of the advantages. Of course, being a white man is the best advantage, honestly. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, as a foreigner, I think you kind of get out of some of the cultural things that may tie your career down a bit more but it's also improving a bit, I guess. I don't know. Uh, it's complicated. I'm sure it's easier in America though. I'm sure it's easier in America. Do I ride a bike? <laughs> I used to have a bike actually in my last place, but I sold it when I moved to this apartment last year because um, bikes scare me in Japan. <laughs> like, uh, like, how do I say this? So bikes are like super common and popular here, but oh my God, they do not follow traffic rules. And that scares me. Like, I don't like having to weave between riding on a sidewalk or like a street, because sometimes you have to. And then like some, a lot of streets, even the bigger ones, if you're riding a bike on it, there's not going to be a bike lane. And like, that scares me because I'm not like a super good bike rider or anything. So I don't have the bike now. There's also a lot of hills in Tokyo. So if you don't have an electric bike, it's a lot harder to ride it, honestly, especially in my apartment now. I'm like on a hill, literally. So yeah, that's why I got rid of it. Permanent residency, I'm gonna try. Is 100K a year rich in Japan? So I'm guessing you mean 100K US dollars. And it's hard. Yes, well, yes, yes. But uh, I think you can live a very good life in Japan on a lower salary than you can in America, but vice versa, salaries here are in general lower. I think the average salary in Tokyo was, what was it, like 50? In US dollars, maybe $40,000 or something like that. It's something like that. Salaries are just lower here because um, you don't you don't need as much money to live here. Um, they should be higher. Don't get me wrong. They need to be higher because there is inflation. But yeah, you can live a pretty good life basically on less money. So 30 is considered old in Japan. Yeah, not like, not like, not in general, just for um, the visa stuff, because Japan wants the young people to make those babies and stuff. I don't know. <laughs> uh, oh, thank you for understanding about work. Yeah, I'm sorry. I wish I had more time. I do. Um, with INTO and a university degree, as I'm already in a language school in Japan, we'll be getting a job, something that's attainable. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, depends on your other experience. 
uh, I don't want to say this, but if nothing else, you can always teach English if you're a native English speaker. But I think with this, you could probably get a job, like a normal-ish job in Japan. So I wouldn't stress too much. Just focus on what kind of job you want to do. I think you definitely can if you're already here. It be, already being in Japan, it makes a big difference. Fellow Floridian from Pensacola. Woo! I'm from um, Brevard County. Do you know where that is? It, it's where NASA is. Does marrying a Japanese person make it quicker to get permanent residency? Oh yeah, it does. So I wish dating worked out <laughs> better, but yeah. No, you can get permanent residency here if you like have a, if you're on a spouse visa for what, like three years or something, then I think you can get it. I don't know, it's something like that, but yeah, way easier. We're logging off. Thank you for joining Era of Infinity. Best hidden Hanami spot. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's hard because I think a lot of the spots I went to were pretty empty because of COVID. So I don't know what they're going to be like this year. I'm really nervous. If you want to avoid crowds, do not go to Nakamegro. That's my advice. That place is insane, even in COVID. I don't know. I need to do more research. Um, I realize cherry blossom season is like next week. <laughs> okay, I need to do more research on this topic. I'll get back to you. Um, but yeah, I just follow a lot of like Instagram and Twitter travel influencer people who have the free time to do this on weekdays and stuff. And I follow their advice. That That's my advice. <laughs> You're going to look into a Shizuoka beach visit. Yeah, definitely do. Um, be careful about which beach you choose because some of them are a bit more, I don't know, what's the word, like college vibey. But there's some really beautiful beaches. And um, last year, actually, I made a vlog going snorkeling in like a very hidden location, very hidden, actually to the point where I wouldn't recommend it. If you don't like speak a little Japanese, for various reasons, well, you could do it if you drive, but there are some great places. There are some really good, great beaches. Rose says her, your daughter has been here for 11 years. Oh no, it updated. 11 years and not planning to come back to the USA. <laughs> yeah, I think that's how I am with my mom. Sorry, mom. <laughs> um, Avi and Ishigaki, have you ever been? No, I haven't. I really want to go. It's on my list. How often do you go to arcades? Mm. I don't know. I'm not very good at the crane games. So I mostly just go with friends. If we're doing like um, the Purikura, the um, photo booth thing, usually. Um, how often do I visit the dentist? You're not trapping me into that question. Not answering because I've been a bad girl. <laughs> Have you read any good fantasy books lately? V. E. Schwab is a great series. I've heard of that. Um, honestly, I've been only reading manhwa, <laughs> the Korean web comics. Um, I really want to read the Throne of Glass series. For some reason, I read like the first two books years ago and then I stopped. But I, I want to read those and then I need to catch up on Brandon Sanderson because this man does not stop writing. What is he doing? I don't know. He releases a new book every other month. Doreen, joining from Pennsylvania. Thank you. Um, typically, you only get paid at the beginning of the month or just one time a month. So in Japan, oh, yeah, this was also a culture shock um, for not just me, but a lot of, at least Americans. I'm not sure about how it works in other countries. But in Japan you usually only get paid once a month. So um, this is why when people move to Japan, I always suggest bringing a lot of money because let's say you start working um, in August, right? August 1st, you start your work, you start your job, whatever. You're not going to see that paycheck until mid to late 
September. So, yeah. <laughs> That's just how it works here. Once you get through like the first two months, it, it's fine. Oh, Tiffany is in Ormond Beach in Florida. I don't know where that is. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a really bad Floridian. <laughs> Miz came from Destin, Florida. Myanmar Beach, Emerald Waters, Soft Sands. I don't know if I've been to any of these places. I don't. I'm, I have no excuse. I have no excuse. Uh, average bot, thank you for joining. Um, Sam says their partner wants to buy Mofusand. <laughs> Best place to buy Mofusand. Actually, I think they're doing a, G, a collaboration right now with GU. I don't know. Um, they do a lot of collaborations. For Mofusand, if you don't know what Mofusand is, let me show you. Um, it's like this cat character that got really popular. So it looks like, uh, I don't know. It's just like a really cute cat. I don't, I don't know which of these images is the best. Okay, here's, I don't know. It's, it's like a cat, okay. Um, I don't know if it's still there, but I saw a cafe for it before in Shinjuku. I don't know if it's still there. Um, but if not, Kitty Land. Kitty Land has all character goods. Especially for Mofu Sand, I bet, because it's super popular. Thank you, Latoya, for joining. Samir's been working for the past five months in Tokyo. Welcome. Willis, oh, you like my music choices. Thank you very much. Where does the influence come from the music choices? Um, honestly, most of them, I just found one person on YouTube, uh, a Korean person, it's called Starry Attic on YouTube. And I've, I found like one of their songs and then like I liked a lot of their songs. So I just downloaded a bunch of them. Uh, yeah, sorry if it's repetitive sometimes, but it's really hard to find good music that is royalty free. Um, actually, I recently paid, last year I paid for Artlist, but I don't, it's like, I don't know. I haven't, it's not really my vibe, I guess. How much do you spend on food in a week? I don't want to tell you. It's bad. I, ever since I started working, I do not cook as much as I used to. And I eat out for lunch like every day at work. I don't make lunch. It's bad. I don't know how much I spend on a week in food or on food, and I don't want to know. Um, well, I'm traveling from Canada. What should I bring as gifts for my taxi drivers and hotel attendants and such? Oh, that's really nice. I think just um, usually if it's a gift, uh, Japanese people just do food, individually packaged food. So... This is always a big struggle for me whenever I go back to America. I try to find individually packaged like souvenirs. Uh, so I recommend that. I don't know what it may be from Canada, but find something like that. And that's all you need to do. It's cheap, it's easy, people like it. Uh, people don't want like random stuff that becomes like knickknacks, you know? Do you like onsen hotels? Oh yeah. Uh, they are more expensive though, so I don't really go that often. Um, but so when I first moved to Japan, I don't know if I've mentioned this in a while. Maybe I have. Uh, so when I first moved to Japan to teach English, I was living in a place called Gero Onsen. And it is like supposed to be, <laughs> according to a philosopher, and like 300 years ago or something, it's one of the top three onsen in Japan. I don't know. They just market themselves that way. And yeah, so I went to a lot of onsen when I lived there because you could just like pay thousand yen or something, 500 yen to just go into a hotel onsen. So I like, I went to so many onsen in that time period. Uh, Gare Onsen, by the way, is great. If you're going to Takayama, please stop by. It is on the train route to Takayama from Nagoya, and it is a good, cute little one-night onsen town.
what manhua am I reading? So um, in the past two days, I binged, uh, uh, what was it called? Hold on. Um, I'm not that kind of talent. I really enjoyed it. Uh, the main character has literally like the worst life possible. <laughs> and right now I started reading Trash of the Count's Family, which I originally read a few years ago and I forgot it all. So I'm just starting again. <laughs> Sam, thank you for joining from New Zealand. Andrew loves the Cosmia books and Discworld. The Cosmia, yeah. There's a lot. Kel asks if I've ever seen a wild boar. I think I have. Maybe back in Gifu. There were a lot of wild monkeys. More wild monkeys than boars, like in civilized areas. Bronwyn, thank you for joining from Australia. Lizette, thank you for joining. I like that lazy over easy egg. <laughs> Gudetama, yeah. Gudetama was like my favorite Sanrio character from when he came out, like when I was in university in America up until about when I moved here for a teaching. And now it's Kokimune. Do you listen to XG? I don't know what that is, so no. <laughs> Milo is at KCP International. I don't know what it is. I'm sorry. <laughs> Cynthia, thank you for joining to say hello. Chen's last onsen they went to was in Hakone. I haven't been to Hakone in a long time. I should really go back. Uh, do the yukatas in Kinosaki fit the normal XL person? <laughs> um, I don't know about Kinosaki, but some hotels I've been to do have special yukata that are like for larger people. It, I think it's just going to totally depend on the hotel. It's totally going to depend. So if you can, I'd maybe send like an inquiry and ask about the sizing of it if you want to wear one. Um, but it's not impossible. Some hotels definitely have it. But some won't. <laughs> Have you been to Nagano to see the monkeys in the hot springs? Yes, I went last year actually with my parents when they visited uh, for my graduation. It was really good. We really liked it. We liked it a lot more than we thought we would. Uh, it was like raining and it was muddy, but it was so nice. It was, it was not that crowded with tourists, but I think that's just because we went right at like 9 a.m. when it opened. If you can do that, do that because it was so nice. It was really cute. We really enjoyed it. Is Wani Kani the best for kanji learning? Well, that's that's what taught me all my kanji, basically. I like it. Uh, I'd say you should try it out. See if it's for you. Uh, the first levels are a slog. But if you can make it to like level 10 and you still don't like it, then you could quit. But... I think Wani Kani's, the main problem is, or at least it was when I did it, uh, you can't like skip ahead levels because I joined La Wani Kani already after I passed in three. So I kind of had to review like a ton of stuff <laughs> before I got to the new stuff. Is it easy to go to a shop or restaurant if you don't speak Japanese? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Depends what you're doing, but no. Um, Japanese people generally, <laughs> not always, are very, um, what's the word, like polite and welcoming to tourists. Like they're not gonna be mad at you if you don't speak Japanese, usually, usually. <laughs> no, please go. Even if it's um, some restaurants, I'd say the restaurants are definitely way harder than stores because some restaurants, they're just not going to have an English menu and they might be too busy to really want to help you or try to help you. So kind of, you might have to like go into a store that doesn't have an English menu, like a restaurant that doesn't have an English menu and maybe they won't be thrilled, but I don't know. It just depends. Um, I wouldn't say don't let it stop you. Try, just try. 
Um, people are very nice and accommodating, especially if you don't have dietary restrictions. Um, <laughs> all right, now I'm just kind of going off, but yeah, if you have dietary restrictions, it's a lot harder. <laughs> Everything's a lot harder. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle, for the congrats. Do I have any Fukuoka recommendations? I don't because <laughs> I have not been in a very long time. And when I did go, it was just for an afternoon. I, I have not spent more than like two hours in Fukuoka, so I need to go back. Would you recommend going to a Japanese language school? I want to build myself to N3 or N2 for work, but I have a hard time self-teaching. If you have the money and if you have the time, yes. Uh, language schools are, they can be expensive, but personally, there's, okay, there's like different types of language schools. So there's gonna be like super intense ones and then like easier ones. Um, the main problem with language schools actually to me is um, not how good they are or bad they are, but like that <laughs> you, you're gonna be there all day. Like it's like going to it's like going to high school. So I st when I studied abroad in Japan uh, in university back when I was twenty, um, we actually didn't do a normal exchange. We went we exchanged like at a language school. It like it was just a language school, and my Japanese went from maybe upper in five to I passed in three in three months. So it was very good. And I've never made that much progress in Japanese ever again. No. <laughs> so, yeah, it was worth it. But you have to be at school Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to, like, 3 p.m. So if you want to, like, come to Japan to study, it's good. It just it depends. Just There are some easier language schools, but, like, attendance is super strict at them usually regardless because it's like for your visa, like the visa has an attendance requirement, but I do recommend it if you can find a good school and if it works for your financial situation and time. Did you ever play a musical instrument? <laughs> um, so from seventh grade to 12th grade, I was in band and I played the trumpet and then the French horn. <laughs> I don't play them now. I don't know how to play them now. Like if you asked me to play it, it would sound so bad. But yeah, I did. Oh, Light, thank you. Bruce, thank you for joining from very early in the UK. Oh my gosh, what time is it there? Like 6 a.m.? Thank you for joining. Grace, what kind of cake did you get? Oh my God, it's actually sitting behind me. I forgot to put it in the freeze fridge again. Wait, I'll show you it. I fear I'm stupid because I just put the knife on my comforter without any anything. It's just hanging out here. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> um, This is the cake I got. Yes, it was chocolate. I'm still eating it very slowly and it's very good. Um. I'll just put it back over here on the comforter where there is no anything for the knife. Great, great, great. Okay. I don't know what I was thinking. It's 4.43 a.m. <laughs> Thank you for joining. Uh, okay. <laughs> you know what? Let me actually have a bite of this cake. Yummy. What is your favorite month to visit Gifu? Um. Uh, depends what you want. Depends what you want. Um, they're all good, honestly. Uh, personally, maybe winter. I think winter is really good, like with the snow, like January. 
And I think onsen are best when it's snowing. But really, you can't go wrong. I think they're all very good. They're all very good. Gifu is a very beautiful uh, prefecture. Yeah, I'm biased, but um, seriously, it's very beautiful. Um, like, it was stunning. Hold on. <laughs> like, I can't believe the scenery just driving to work every day. It was beautiful. Uh, the downside is there's no young people <laughs> who aren't married with children, so... Not really my crowd. Hard to make friends is, is what I'm saying. But yeah, let's let's dig in. Okay. Let's see. Um it's just so everything's just so pretty. Oh, they're all in the iCloud, so they have to load. Like this is just like a local park. Oh, you can't really see it. Come on. But it's, it's like, wow, here's me when I was um, 30 pounds lighter. Oh, okay, I won't focus. So I guess you don't get to see it. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Uh, by the way, yeah, I did gain a lot of weight since I moved to Japan. I was expecting the opposite. Um, let's see. Oh, this was a beautiful, see, this is really where you need to go to do real cherry blossom hunting. These rural places, incredible. Um, they're all loading. Like here's like just a local shrine. I went after work, I think one day. Beautiful, beautiful, no one there. Just, it's just stunning. Look, just, Come on, how do you beat this? Come on, load, no, come on. Focus, focus! <laughs> there, no, come on! Focus! How do you beat that? How do you beat that? Incredible. Uh, yeah, these were spring, sorry. <laughs> um, and then, okay, let me, let me show you a winter one so I don't, oh, here's a summer. God, it was just, it was so beautiful, you guys. Why won't the camera focus on my phone? Look at that. The beautiful, it's like crystal clear water. You can totally see everything. There's fish in it. It's just stunning. Um, let me show you a winter one so I don't look biased. Um, okay, here's a good one. Um, so I am from Florida, so any amount of snow at all is impressive. <laughs> yeah, look at that. It's just like mountain, snow, gorgeous. It was just so beautiful. I haven't been back since I left. I really should go back. Oh, I did play the game Detroit Becoming Human a few years ago. That was very good. Um, oh. The chat just updated with a bunch of chats. Hold on. <laughs> what is it difficult to visit other cities like Fukuoka or Sendai with a uh, little Japanese or no Japanese? <laughs> no, no. Um, actually, I think most tourist sites in Japan are very tourist friendly. Uh, at least enough. They're enough. You know, like, can you understand everything in every store? No. But... I think you can get by, uh, especially if it's like a bigger ish tourist kind of place like Matsumoto or yeah, Sendai even. Oh, I have to sneeze. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> um, no. And like I said before, Japanese people are very kind. And especially once you're out of Tokyo or Kyoto, I think they're going to try a lot harder to be welcoming because like you're not in a constant tourist area. You know what I mean? That, that's the vibe I get at least. I don't know. Light says their boyfriend is Japanese and they're thinking about going back to Japan. 
but they want to get better at Japanese. Are you able to work while going to a language school? Yes, you can. Uh, you have to apply for like permission for the visa, but you can get it. You can work part-time up to 28 hours a week, I believe. But yes, you can work. Or I don't think anyone would go to language school. Do you have any clothes brands or shoe stores that you recommend for someone six foot three? Uh, that's a hard one. I don't know. I'm not six foot. I'm not, I'm not like super tall. Like I'm tall, but I'm not like super tall. Does anyone know? If anyone knows, please let me know. I can't think of any, like there's like, sh there's stores for like, that are like big and tall or whatever, but you know, I don't know. Honestly, I'm a shoe size eight and a half. Uh, women's US and even that is incredibly it's like I'm at like the limit like the top limit of what normal shoe sizes I could find and even then half of the stores won't carry anything I can fit in at least half is it difficult to own a cat or small dog in an apartment in Tokyo mm. <laughs> well it is well, it's, it's more like the more things you're adding onto the condition list when you're trying to find an apartment, it's going to be harder. It's like you're already at like foreigner and then maybe you don't speak Japanese. I don't know. And then you want a pet friendly. So like, you know what I mean? Like every condition makes it harder. Um, that being said, you definitely can find pet friendly ones. They're just going to cost you more money. Same with the foreigner friendly too, honestly. No, but you can. It's not like super difficult, but you need to make sure you clear it. Like the, it's a building where you can have one in the first place. Thank you for joining from Calgary. Thank you for joining from Texas. What are my favorite boba spots? Yeah, the Alfred T room in Lumine closed. I can't believe it. I know. Um, so the boba tapioca hype train is like, you know, it, like in 2019, it was like here and now it's like, Bing! it's like going down. So a lot of boba places are closing here or they have closed. I like gongcha. <laughs> um, and the Coke, what's it called? Coco, Coco something. Wait, I liked, okay. I like Coco something in Shibuya. But, oh my god, I went there the other day and I paid 900 yen for a boba. So I don't know if I can go back, because that was insane. 900 yen! It wasn't even a special one, it was just like kind of normal. I don't know. That, and I also like the alley chain of boba stores here, but I feel like they've also been closing a lot of the stores. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Andrew, yeah, for opening. Nathan, infinite carbs. Yeah, you're right. It is infinite carbs in Japan. It's awful. I ate way too much bread in the first year. Is that a duck light on top of your laptop? Where's the duck light? This thing? Um... I'm going to be honest. I got it from Timu. <laughs> Wee! It's cute. Yeah, Japanese people is so yummy. And I don't understand how Japanese people are slim. I know. I know. It's just, I don't know. I guess it's just genetic. I don't know. Um, also, I'll watch these people eat the exact same amount of food as me. So frustrating. What's my favorite anime? So my favorite anime of all time is Gintama. Um, I don't recommend it unless you've already seen a lot of anime. So there's a condition. You won't understand a lot of the jokes if you have not already seen, if you don't already have like a f foundation of knowledge about Japan and anime, you're not really gonna like Gintama probably. So it's hard to recommend it. Oh, thank you for joining. Oh, bless you because I sneezed. <laughs> thank you. 
Hello, Anthony from high school. No, I remember. <laughs> Thank you, Anthony, for joining. High school is so long ago. I can't believe it's so long. Guys, I'm so old now. <laughs> I graduated high school in 2014. Can you believe it? Ah. I don't know where the time goes. Do I bring home American snacks when I come back from Florida? I do. Um, and then I pass them out at work or something. And then I also keep some just for me in my pantry. I brought home goldfish this time. Yeah, I think finding big shoe sizes here is basically impossible unless you're at a specialty store or online, but it's hard. I know, I can't believe Alfred T room closed. I don't, I don't know, it just, it was just gone one day, but it was always crowded. But I think the, uh, I bet the rent was way too high for that location. Aloha, thank you, aloha. Yeah, 900 yen for a boba. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, actually in Japan, they do a lot of student discounts on everything, so gongcha. If, you, if you're a student, go to Gongcha. They have student discounts. They have like a special student discount menu. So I was so used to getting cheap boba from Gongcha. I could get a black sugar, brown sugar, um, what's it called in English? Brown sugar, cocktail, milk tea for like 400 yen with the student discount. But now that I'm not a student, it's like 700 yen. So I'm struggling. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Christine. For the congrats. Thank you, TM. Thank you, Esteban. Gintama is hilarious. It is. No, that was. It's my favorite anime of all time. I haven't seen it in a while, but it's always going to be number one in my heart because I was so into it. It's it's genuinely so good. If you understand the jokes. <laughs> um. But right now, the one, an anime that I'm probably, I don't know why. I don't know. I also can't recommend this, but I'm, like, so into Conan right now. Like, I don't even watch it that much. Like, I'll just, I save it. So, like, I'll binge it all, like, twice a year. I don't know why I'm so into it right now. And I have been for years. Um, but Detective Conan, much like One Piece, is, like, a thousand episodes. <laughs> so, no, it's over a thousand episodes. So, I can't recommend it to casual people, because it is a lot, but it's just all murder mysteries. And then the plot moves forward at the speed of a snail. But I love it. And you have to watch the movies. The movies are so good. Uh, so the movies, they release a movie every year in Japan in the cinemas. This is a cultural event. It's genuinely a cultural event because it's every year. The next one's coming out next month, I believe. They always do it uh, the same time of year for Golden Week in Japan. And the movies are so good. And they're always so crowded. And I don't know. I love it. I don't know. I don't know. Um, ramen in Ohio is $18. Well, you know, I don't know why, but I want to say it's not that bad. I think ramen here usually costs about 1,000 yen. Which is, I don't know, it's cheap. Okay, it's cheaper than $18. Don't get me wrong. But it's going up here too. Because it used to be like 800 yen. If you want bigger sizes, go to international stores. Yeah, that's actually where I do a lot of my shopping. Uh, like Zara, H&M and stuff. It's because the clothes there will actually like fit me better. But wait, I just remembered. I wanted to show you guys. Because I feel that I realize I have not been doing clothing hauls in my videos because I can't film vlogs as often now <laughs> but look what I got I forgot I wanted to show this I went to Uniqlo yesterday so let's do a haul on Uniqlo <laughs> the global superstore but the reason I wanted to show you because I was so shocked yesterday by how many of the pants fit me usually they don't fit me that well here like at Uniqlo even 
because I'm like the top size or whatever. Um, anyway, oh, uh, black does not show up good on camera. I'm sorry. So I got this black skirt, but it's like that cottage core vibe. I really don't know if this is showing up. It's just black. But it's like, wait. Can you see it? Okay, sorry, you can't see it. I'll, I will wear this. No, but it fits, it fits. It's a large and it fits. So I'm so happy. Sorry, it's black. <laughs> okay, put down the bed. And then we got this. So the C, the C collection came out. Um, it's a collaboration with a designer, I forgot his name. Uh, but it's super popular. It's like flying off the shelves and especially this stuff. I think it actually just came out this week, the second round. So look at this. Eh. It's so cute. Like it's so cute. This is a large and it has like this V cutout thing. And it looks so good. And then I got the matching cardigan. This is gonna be great for spring and summer. So the shirt's a large and the cardigan I got an XL in because I like the cardigan's a bit bigger. Yeah, it's like a set. It's so cute. Um, so actually I heard blue is the color of the year. Like it's gonna be the trending color, like bright blue. So they did have a bright blue color of this but they only had smalls left. So I got green. <laughs> but yeah, buy blue, bright blue stuff if you want to be trendy, I guess. Um, and then last, I got jeans. Incredible. The denim at Uniqlo never fits me. So they're like, this is an XL and it has like this elastic waistband. They're like wide leg jeans and they're so comfortable. I'm so happy. Yeah. Uh, so Uniqlo is like, it's going off right now. I'm so happy. That's the haul. What size am I in the USA? Um, A medium, probably. I, I guess a medium. A medium or a medium or large, uh, depending on what I'm buying or where I am. And then in Japan, I'm a large or extra large. Um, I can preach wisdom to high school kids because I'm a decade out of school. Don't say that. I know. I know. I was teaching. I, I know it's hard to believe, but I was a teacher of middle school students when I was 21. <laughs> like when I first moved to Japan, I was 21 in teaching them. That's wild. Uh, yeah, I did teach though for four years. So call me sensei. I'm not purchasing the Munaida on motorcycle. Uh, <laughs> motorcycles terrify me. Uh, I did buy a lot of Lucky Bags this year. Please go watch their videos on my channel. They're pretty recent actually, because it was just in January. And actually we had a very good Lucky Bag haul. Who else watched the Lucky ha Bag haul videos this year? I think it was, it went very well this year. Compared to last year, this year was like, wow. It was so good. Yeah, I'm a small in the USA, but a medium large in Japan. Yeah, that's how it goes, guys. You come here and you're like the largest person ever all of a sudden. It snowed last week in Ueno and today is 21 degrees Celsius. I know, what's happening? Why is it so warm today? And I'm in here <laughs> talking to you guys. <laughs> um, no, it's like, yeah, it's 70 degrees uh, in Fahrenheit right now but on Thursday the high is 50 so we're not out of it yet um actually I see rain on the forecast next week so I'm a bit worried about the cherry blossoms uh 
Um, what is a memorable time from my teaching days? <sighs> I don't know. Teaching is like, teaching in Japan actually is really good, in my opinion. Like, as far as teaching can be. I mean, uh, I'm not a teacher, obviously. Like, I'm not like a, I'm not a licensed teacher. But the kid, Japanese kids, not all of them. Some of them are nightmares. I've had some awful children, awful classes. Um, but most of them are very good and polite and they like you probably. But yeah, there was like one class. I don't, I don't know what happened with this class. They were like known as the nightmare class. Like this group, this whole year of students when I was teaching in Gifu was like the worst children you've ever seen in your life. Like the worst behaved children I've ever seen. Did not listen to anything. We're talking all class. We're just literally throwing things during class and making fun of the teacher, not me, the other teacher. I watched this other teacher get bullied relentlessly by these students. I feel so bad for her. Uh, her personality was a bit too meek, I think, to handle middle schoolers. But yeah. Um, no, in general, like a lot of the kids been so good and like so cute and like, I love them. So I don't know. The thing I miss most from teaching is definitely some of the students. Uh, like they're so cute. I can't, uh, I want to show you pictures, but I'd have to blur out the faces because I don't think I have any pictures. Yeah, but no, the kids are really cute. They are. Um, and it was very, it's a very rewarding job. It's just like stagnation, career stagnation, you know, because I'm not a licensed teacher. Uh, but if you're considering it, I personally had a good time in both. I used to teach at, um, I've taught at kindergarten, elementary school, and middle school in rural Japan in Gifu. And then when I moved to Tokyo, I taught at a Eikaiwa, which is like an English conversation school for, uh, I taught age zero through 12. Yeah, zero. <laughs> uh, the babies are super cute. But yeah, I had, I really, I had a pretty good time at both of them. It was a good job. Good kids, mostly, not all, but mostly. It is physically exhausting. That is my main complaint. Like when I came home from work, I would just be exhausted. But yeah. Yeah, you guys like the Uniqlo clothes. Thank you. Yeah, they do also have online, uh, like Uniqlo, if you buy online, they have bigger sizes. Uh, same, same with GU, I think, and a few other stores. So look out for that. Oh, look, guys, look, oh, let me show you my car. Did you know I used to drive uh, when I lived in rural Japan? If you move here to teach and you end up rural, you're probably gonna have to drive. Or maybe, maybe not. Um, this was my car. Wait, isn't it so cute? Is it focusing? Yeah, wait, come on. It's literally pink. Like, it's a, it, it's a pink car. And the car model is called Latte. I'm not making this up. On the back of the car, it says Latte. <laughs> I love this car until it broke down on me two weeks before I left the freaking place. It, ah, the muffler fell off of the stupid car two weeks before the end of my job. But I needed the car to get to work. So I had to pay like 500 bucks to get the stupid car fixed. Still pisses me off. Uh, but I bought that car in cash for two grand. Not bad. I love that pink car. Oh, thank you all for joining. Oh, new people. Hello, welcome, Danielle. Hello. What's the best month to visit Japan? Okay, well, you all know this because I complain about it way too much, but I don't like summer. The only good part about summer is festivals. But, uh, but month, I'd say November or... Cherry blossoms are really good, but it's so crowded. So November or 
very end of March to mid April, not the end of April. Don't come here during golden week. I'm warning you again. But mm, I like winter. I don't know. I like winter in Tokyo at least because it's not that extreme. Like it's kind of mild. But yeah, I think November is good because you can see the fall leaves or at least some of them. And the temperature is pretty good. Do I have a favorite supermarket? Just the closest supermarket is the best supermarket. That's how it is. Um, yeah, I know. I can't believe the kids bullied her. I felt really bad for her. Her mental state was not good. <laughs> uh, do I like Japanese curry? I love Japanese curry. I love it. Oh, HL, thank you for joining. Have you considered revisiting Okinawa? I do. I definitely want to go. Uh, maybe this summer, if I can. We'll see. Maybe not. But I really want to go back to the beaches. So good. Kawaii size car. It is. It was very cute. Uh, I only, I can like only drive these miniature, they're called K cars here. They're like not full size cars by American standards. I don't think you can drive them on the road. Maybe. Uh, but I'm like, if you, I, okay. I learned to drive on an Xterra, a Nissan Xterra. If you stuck me in that car today, I think I'd like have a panic attack. I don't think I could do it because I'm just so used to these miniature cars now. Why am I so awesome? Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. <laughs> yeah, my muffler bearings broke up. I don't know what happened, honestly. I was just so upset. And I think I think they had to replace the whole muffler, though, because I think it rusted out, if I remember. Like, the car was, like, almost 20 years old, and it these kind of cars are not meant to last super long, so... I don't know, but I think he had to replace it. I think he said, or maybe it's because I dragged it on the road after I called my supervisor crying, not knowing what to do. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, spring and fall in Japan, way, way better than summer. Do not come in summer if you can help it. But I know a lot of people say they have like kids in school, so they can only come in summer. I get it. I get, I, I get it. Um, in that case, come as early as possible is what I'm going to say. Cause July, August, they're hard. Even September, September is not good either. What's your experience living in the U S I don't know. Cause I'm like from the U S so I, I feel like I can't really give any advice. And also I left as soon as I graduated college. So I've never lit. I've never worked in, I've done like internships and part-time jobs in America, but I've never like lived there as a normal adult. So I don't know. All I see about America now is how freaking expensive it is. So I don't know if I'll ever move back. Cause I don't think I could afford it or get a job even what's with the layoffs. I don't, I don't get it. You cannot do that in Japan, by the way, There's, they don't do that kind of layoff thing here. You can confirm November was awesome. Good. Yeah. I like, yeah, November is great. November is a great month. And you can also see the Christmas lights. Usually they start putting them up in November. I'd love to see autumn leaves. Where would be good to visit? It just depends um, what time you're like actually here. So I think I kind of mentioned this in my recent cherry blossom video, but like you can track the leaves here and like they're blooming. No, leaves don't bloom. Their death status, I don't know. <laughs> they're whatever, the redness level of the leaves um, in different locations. So it's totally gonna depend. So like um, go wherever the leaves are is the advice, especially outside of Tokyo. Like you're gonna find good places anywhere you go. Like Mount Fuji, lots of really good famous Leaf spots. Yeah, Kyoto, beautiful. Tokyo has some really good parks. Just so many places. Oh, Hula, good night. Thank you for joining. 
Nathan, how is Japanese summer compared to Florida summer? No, no, no. I don't know. I think actually, um, I think Japanese summer and Florida summer may be the same. They're both super humid and hot, but I think Japanese summer is worse, or at least Tokyo summer is, because uh, you have to walk everywhere here. Like you're surrounded by concrete and you have to walk to the bus. You have to walk to the train station, to the stores, whatever. And that walk will kill you. Like that 15 minute walk in the summer, miserable. But you know, in Florida, you drive everywhere. So it's different. Um, also, ACs here are a lot weaker than they do in America. Like in Florida in the summer, you could walk into like a Target and it'll be like 65 degrees in there with the AC. Here they don't do that. So yeah, I don't know. It's just so hard. Is June the rainy season? Is that better than how hot it gets from July? I guess it depends on your preferences, I guess. Um, personally, maybe it was just last year, but last year I don't think the rainy season was that bad. So maybe I'm only remembering that. But personally, I prefer the rain and a bit lower temperatures or like some rain and a bit more manageable temperatures than July, because July is like 100 degrees every day. So, I don't know. It's up to you, and it changes every year. Hearing the summer is worse than Florida terrifies me. <laughs> it depends where you are. It depends what you're doing. If you're at the beach, maybe it's fine. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, Florida's nicer beaches. I don't know. I'm skipping Japanese summer. <laughs> Please do. I would so leave this country between June and September if I could. Um, have I visited any other countries? Is there another country I'd like to live in? So I visited, I haven't actually been that many countries. Uh, COVID ruined a lot of plans <laughs> for everyone. But um so since I've moved to Japan, I've been to Korea and China. These were both when I was teaching full-time. And yeah. And then before that, I have been to Spain and France in my teenage years. I'd like to go back to Europe. I really, really want to go back to Europe because I've not been to Europe in over a decade. Uh, and I've also, like many Floridians, hit up a bunch of the Caribbean countries, like a lot of them, because they're like very close. But yeah, I really want to, I'm definitely at least, I'm going to go to at least one more country this year. I'm going to make it happen. But as far as living, I can't really imagine, I don't really want to like pick up another language. Uh, does that sound bad? Like I'm kind of tired of like, I don't want to learn a language at least to like fluency, like being able to live there. Like I am with Japanese because it's a lot of work. <laughs> so if I ever moved to another country, I think it, I'd want it to be an English speaking one, but we'll see. I don't know. I'm, I'm open to anything really it just depends where life takes you. It just depends. But Ideally Europe, if I, if I had to move to another country, somewhere in Western Europe or the UK or something, I think. Because I'm trying to knock off a lot of Asia while I live here. Although I still have a lot left to go. And I'm never going to finish it all, but what can you do? Yeah, the Taiwanese summers I hear are very bad. I think, that, I think Taiwanese summers are worse. I think so. I've never been, but from what I've heard. Yeah, use the cherry blossom forecast as a guide if you're coming. Definitely. Definitely look at the forecast. I think they just updated it. Am I crazy? I think they just updated it like a year, no, a year ago, <laughs> like a week ago or less. I don't know. Uh, check it. It changes all the time. Um, we'll see. 
I don't know. What are most famous, must see famous Japanese statues? <laughs> the Statue of Liberty in Odaiba. Uh, statues, not thinking of any. Uh, the do, do the the it's not a statue, but the Osaka Running Man. I don't know. Japan's not a big statue. Oh, wait. What am I saying? All of the Daibutsu. <laughs> if you want to see an impressive statue, uh, look up the Daibutsu. What's it in English? Like big Buddha, great Buddha statues or something. Um, there's a few of them or multiple of them in Japan. There's a big one in Kyoto, famous, and Kamakura is also very well known. These are very large. <laughs> and I feel like I saw another one. Sapporo. I think I saw one in Sapporo last two, two years ago. I think. Those are pretty good. Nara. Yeah, that's where it is. Nara, Nara. That's it. Um, what do I think about Korea versus Japan? Well, I've never lived in Korea. Um... And I don't want to learn Korean, like to the to the conversational level at least, just because that's a lot of time. But I don't know. I think I could have been happy if I ended up going to Korea instead of Japan. I think I also could have been happy, but I don't know if I would have lasted as long as I have in Japan. Um, obviously, I'm biased that I like Japan more because I live here. But I think Korea is very nice. And I know right now there is a Korea boom compared to the Japan boom of a decade ago. Uh, I am very jealous of Korean cafes. I think the cafe culture there is very good. I mean, Japan is also, I think, very good compared to, okay, compared to suburban Florida, it's like phenomenal. But yeah. I don't know, it just depends. Would I ever buy a house? I, I think I mentioned it. Um, if I had money. <laughs> if I had money and permanent residency, maybe. But personally, I like renting, at least right now, at this stage of my life, because I like being able to have the freedom to try out different neighborhoods, because all the neighborhoods in Tokyo are so different. How did you manage to live alone in a foreign country? Was it hard the first time? No, it's hard. It's hard. Um, I mean, now I'm used to it. It's not that hard now, honestly. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know anything. I don't know anything else. I've been here for so long. Uh, yeah, so I moved to Japan when I was 21, right? To Gifu. That was hard because... It was rural Japan. I did not speak Japanese as well as I do now. I did speak some, though. Uh, so that's important to note. I could speak some Japanese. Like, I was, like, in three, which is super helpful. But, yeah, the, the problem with the rural areas, like, it's hard to make friends with, um, it's, uh, I don't know. It's, like, everyone's very friendly. But it's hard to make like a close friend. Does that make sense? Especially with Japanese people. Um, but like, I don't know, it's hard. <laughs> well, I think that the hardest part is like you have to learn how to be an adult on your own. Like you, I can't text my mom and be like, how do I file taxes? My mom doesn't know. You know, you have to figure it all out yourself. So you have to rely a lot on the internet. Props to anyone who lived here before the internet. I don't know how you did it. And uh, the other foreign people, like I know people talk about a foreign bubble, but I think you kind of need it to an extent, especially when you first move here. Like it's so helpful. Like not all people, some people, they slide right in, make friends, get a girlfriend, whatever, great. But for a lot of people, I think you need a support system. And you might not always get that, depending on where you live in Japan. So, I don't know, it's kind of hard. But, um, yeah, after the first, I think the first year is the hardest. But, 
I recommend trying to stick it out for two, especially for people on JET. So I came to Japan on the JET program, which is like a government English teaching program. But they make you decide if you want to stay another year very early. I think you have to decide like after you've only been in Japan for like three or four months, which is probably when you're like at one of the lowest points. So I don't know. It depends on your situation, but I recommend trying to stick it out for two years because year two things were looking a lot happier <laughs> for my mental state, a lot better, etc. Um, and now it's all I know. Um, actually, if you, if I move back to America, I'm actually scared because I'd have to relearn how to be an adult. Like, I don't know how to do anything anymore. <laughs> uh, no, like seriously, I don't know. I don't know about taxes that well. I don't know how to go to the dentist. I don't know about insurance. I don't know about like anything. So it's actually easier for me right now to live in Japan, I think, at this point. I don't know. It also just depends on you and your personality. And I have no responsibilities. Like, like I'm not married or have kids or anything. So there's a meme dog statue in Chiba. That's cool. I didn't know that. The Pokemon statues. I know. I love them so much. That's why I always take their, their video and vlogs. Even if I don't buy anything. Yeah, those are, those are good statues. Germany is nice, a bit expensive, lots of trains. Yeah, I hear European, European, Europe has a lot of trains. So if I did move back to America, that's another thing I don't like. I don't like the, uh, the idea that I'd have to drive everywhere. Like I know there's some cities that, where you don't need to do that. Like I don't think I'd move to New York City, honestly, uh, or anything. I think you have to get a car wherever I would end up moving. I don't know. It's just so different. So different. I will say the good thing about having cars is um, grocery shopping here is a big pain. <laughs> like, that's definitely the worst. Like, you, you just can't care because you have to carry it all, you know. People, okay, sometimes people recommend those, like, granny cart things people don't use them here unless you're like actually old. I, I don't know if I've literally, I maybe one time in six years have I seen a younger person under the age of 60 <laughs> using one of the luggage thingies for groceries. So I, I can't do it. I can't, I just can't. Cafes in Korea let you charge your electronics. With, they have like like they have their own chargers. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, but you know Japanese cafes are good compared to American ones, so I can't complain. How often do I go to Akihabara? <laughs> Not that often, actually. Um, I way prefer Ikebukuro. So Akihabara is more like for boys, and Ikebukuro is like for girls. <laughs> I, I'm using this very loosely, but it's like um, what they sell and what they have is like aimed at traditionally men targeted things. You know what I mean? Like the harem anime and I don't know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, but then Ikebukuro is where the girls go <laughs> to play. Uh, lots of like BL, boys love stuff and um, just like female targeted things like ensemble stars or I don't know anything um that being said still go to both I still recommend going to both especially if you're an anime fan you should go to both because um I'm saying they're like targeted at different people but like I can still find stuff I like in Akihabara and there's like stuff you can only get in Akihabara like they have way more figure stores for example I don't actually know any in Ikebukuro or I've never been to one um but Ikebukuro is really great for, for example, like buying badges, like can badges of characters, if you want that, that kind of stuff. I don't know. Um, I just prefer Ikebukuro. And Ikebukuro has Sunshine City, which is my favorite mall, as we all know. 
because it has a Pokemon Center and stuff. So, yeah. Have you ever needed to go to the American Embassy? No. No. I don't think they actually let normal people in. Like, if you don't like a reason. I think. I've never been inside any embassy, so I don't know. I, I only, like, see them from the outside. <laughs> um, like, even I, I renewed my passport last year, I think. Uh, but you just mail that in. So, I like, I mailed it to the embassy. Like, you cannot drop it off. I don't think they let you. Or maybe that was because of COVID. I don't know. <laughs> Commuting for three months has made me never want to drive again. Yeah. Yeah. I don't... Yeah, I, I remember commuting in Orlando because I went to college in Orlando, uh, UCF, go Knights. <laughs> and uh, yeah, commuting sucks in a car too. So um, like, I'm pretty sure a drive that should have only taken 30 minutes to go to my internship office, it would take like an hour in the morning and then going home almost an hour and a half. I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding. It was so bad. Orlando is so bad. America's got a problem. Yeah, public transit. I think the ideal world is like where I can walk to a train station, but I also live where a car, like where you kind of need a car. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> it's like common in Japan, but I'm, I can't think of an American like version, like where you have like one car and then, but like you take the train to wor like work and stuff usually. I don't want to fill my room with waifus. Yeah, it's full with my husband, husbandals. It's full. It's chock full with my husband's guys. Um, all of my Amuro, my, he, the, my collection. There's no more space. <laughs> Let me put him back. He sits on my computer and guards me. Uh, how many cities have I been to in Japan? Oh yeah, I showed it earlier, but I'll show it again because I know people joined halfway through. But I have this map um, and it's not updated but you can scratch off the prefectures as you go. So yeah, it's on Amazon. And yeah, I don't know. I think the worst part of working is I can't travel like I used to. So I haven't been making much progress. So yeah, we're gonna have to fix that. Um, but I usually, I do collect one thing actually. So I collect magnets when I go to a new place or like on a trip, I'll try to get like one magnet. Like, so they're all in my fridge and yeah, I probably have at least 20 now, probably about 20 of different places I've been to in Japan. Cause like everywhere is going to have a magnet and they're cheap. So I like magnets. <laughs> Gainesville was a pretty good place. No. Bad. <laughs> My sister goes to uh, UF, actually, right now. Uh, <laughs> I, I visited UF when I got in, but I had no desire to live in a swamp. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, yeah. I was busy going to Disney every day. or every, I, Literally, I, in college, uh, in Orlando, I went to Disney every week, almost. Um I was working. I did used to work at Disney and Universal too, but this was back in the days when the annual pass and going to Disney was not like two hundred dollars. I don't know what they're thinking right now, guys. Disney's Disney's making me mad. Uh, I did just go to Disney when I went back home this past December for Christmas because I had never been to the new Star Wars land. So that was good, but God, it's so expensive now. Uh, Tokyo Disney, for reference, is like 8,000 yen a day. What's that in USD? Like 50 bucks? Go, go to Disney in Japan if you have the slightest interest. It's cheap. 
I love it. I don't know. American Disney is insane. Would I ever do an outside live? No, because I'm too embarrassed. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how people do that. I don't know how people do that. Because like, even when I'm just like filming like wee, with my camera, I get embarrassed. Um, I've kind of, I've mastered how to pretend like I'm not filming as much as possible. Like I've mastered it because I still get cringe. Like, like I, I'll just do like, or like I'll like pretend like I'm playing like this. So I don't know how people do the lives. Um, I, I genuinely don't. It's not for me. Maybe one day, <laughs> but it's so, I can't do it. I just can't do it. Uh, it's already such a hurdle just to, to work up to the point where you can vlog outside. And even then, the reason you don't see me doing like this, like talking to the camera, is because I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed, okay? It's, it, I don't know. It got easier after Taurus came back because now I can like, now I like blend in, I guess. Like, you know what I mean? Like during COVID, it was different because uh, I stood out a lot more, but now at least I can blend in a bit. I don't know. I don't know. Historically, the price for Disney US has never lowered, only raised. Yeah. And they've raised, like, I swear they've, like, doubled their ticket price in the past decade. It's insane. Um, do I prefer Disney World or Disney Tokyo? <sighs> okay, so Disney Tokyo is also super crowded. Disney World, I, I saw on TikTok recently the... Um, like people are posting the spring break crowds at Disney World. It's insane. I don't want to go during that. Um, but honestly, Disney Tokyo, Tokyo Disney is like also very crowded. But I don't know. I have so many memories in Disney World. But I don't know. If it was between the Tokyo Disney of today and Disney World of when I was in college then I'd say Disney World. But as it stands right now, Tokyo Disney. Uh, that being said, they're both very good in their own reasons. Um, but yeah, Disney Sea is also super good, super special. And yeah, it's kind of hard, but especially the crowds. I think everything's just, the lines for all the rides nowadays are so long at both of them. How are people out there with selfie sticks? I don't know. It, I, I don't know. But good for you if you can do it. No, seriously, I, I just can't. <laughs> um, what was the first thing that shocked you about the culture when you first moved? Hmm. That's a hard one. I don't know, cause then, okay, so when I moved here, like in 2018 to teach English, that was my third, I'd already been to Japan three times. And I've, and two of these were studying abroad. So I think my situation was a bit different than most people's. <laughs> mm, maybe like, I think the schools are, insane or like I don't know like the level of discipline that you can expect out of a first grader here is wild <laughs> compared to in America um but I, okay I think I just I think I just mentioned this recently but um it's so hard to make a close Japanese friend here especially if they don't have any experience like living abroad or learning English. I feel it's so hard. Like they're just not interested in getting to this level of friendship with you, but you'll think they are the whole time because they're being nice. And like the, and if you say like, Oh, we should hang out on Saturday and go da da da. They'll be like, yeah, that's awesome. But then when you bring it up again, they'll be like, Oh, sorry, I'm going back home or something. You're never going to get there. It's like so hard. So that really shocked me, I think, when I was uh, teaching. Because I, I really tried to make a lot of Japanese 
friends, especially with the younger coworkers, but it, it never worked out. It never worked out. I tried, genuinely, I tried. <laughs> I tried very hard, uh, but moving to Tokyo, a lot, it's a lot easier now. But yeah. You have to embrace the cringe and do lives. I can't do it. I, I'm, I have a limit of cringe. <laughs> Cheryl, thank you for the 50K Omerito. Yeah, Disney World is way bigger than Disney Tokyo, but I, I think the thing with Disney Tokyo or Tokyo Disney is that you can get there from Tokyo. Like it's 30 minutes on the train from Tokyo Station. Um, so it's like a casual place that people can go to. Like people go on dates there. People like high school kids just go on the weekend. Like it's way more casual than a trip to Disney World is. Does that make sense? Like, it's it's just, it's treated differently, I guess. Um, do you prefer Tokyo Disney or Universal Studios Japan? Um, honestly, I've only been to Universal Studios once and I have not been to Nintendo World yet. I know. Uh, well, it happened during COVID and I just haven't, I just haven't made the trip down there and I don't have any friends now who will go with me because they've already been. <laughs> so I don't know when I'm ever gonna go. <laughs> and I've not been to the Ghibli park. I tried to go when it first opened, I kept losing all the lotteries and then I just gave up. But I heard they just uh, reopened, or they, re they opened up the Howl's Moving Castle part, I think. So I think it's finished now. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's finished. So if it is finished, I'd like to go again. I still have my cake. Oh. Okay. <laughs> we need an anime land, like Universal Studios. So there's this theme park called Fuji Q Highland. It's uh, right next to Mount Fuji. And I've never been <laughs> because I don't like roller coasters because it's actually known for the roller coasters. But I think they do anime collabs a lot and like anime worlds or whatever. Do they have a Naruto part still? I don't know. But look that up. <laughs> How is the work culture? just totally different depending on the company you're in. I'd say right now the company I'm in is it's Japanese, but it's like liberal Japanese. Does that make sense? Like it's not conservative traditional Japanese company. Um, so yeah. <laughs> uh, the culture thing is totally dependent on your workplace. And if I had to say there's one big mistake people make or like a learning curve is if someone says you can go home, don't go home. <laughs> like, okay, I made this mistake before. Everyone's, everyone makes this mistake. But like in, um, what's it called? <laughs> like in... What was I saying? Wait. Oh yeah. Okay. So it's like, like it, let's say you have a company event or whatever. And someone's like, okay, Allison, you can go home early. It's fine. You've already done everything you needed to do. That's a trap. Don't go home early. Never go home early. Especially if you're young. Like, yeah, you have the foreigner card a bit, but you can only play that like once and you don't want to rely on it basically because <laughs> like um if you go home early like you don't stay to clean up or whatever or go out to drinks um their image of you will change and your reputation will change does that make sense it's it's like kind of tricky um i'm not saying you always need to stay late or you always need to go out to drink or whatever but you need to know when you need to stay late like no, no, you can leave. Okay, so leaving on time, 
depends on the company. Some I've heard of some companies you definitely can't leave on time. My company, I usually, I try to leave within about 15 minutes of my end time. Sometimes I have to do overtime. Sometimes I don't. Um, but at my company, that's okay. It totally depends on your company and like if you're busy. <laughs> Um, oh, thank you. This is live and it's good. Thank you. Thank you. I think the li outdoor live streams can be very interesting. Um, and I like seeing the new places. I especially like that one guy who walks around Tokyo. I like that kind of thing where you see the scenery. But yeah, I think if I tried it, it would not be a good quality live stream. I couldn't guarantee that. Uh, I, I couldn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> does it bug you to see how much trash is in America when you go home? Yeah, it's dirty. Um, uh, but I'm from the suburbs, so it's different. So it's, it's not actually that dirty where I'm from. Um, there are parts of, uh, Tokyo that are dirty too. Like, uh, Shibuya, Shinjuku, very dirty. <laughs> Very dirty, especially on weekends at night. Throw up, garbage, you name it. Oh, thank you everyone who reaches out and wants to hang up, hang out or something. The problem is I just don't have Taze off now. Uh, like, I just don't have that much time off. Um, I'd consider like a meetup in the future, maybe a hundred K. Let's make it happen. Uh, I don't know. It's like uh, so embarrassing. I feel like no one would show up if I did a meetup. So it's like, I don't want to do that. You know, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I did meet up more with people when I was in university, but, uh, now that I work full time, it's just so hard. It's so hard to manage my schedule now, I feel. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe if the situation changes in the future. Um, do you get paid for staying? Depends on the company, but it's like, like, no, like there's like, a certain amount of overtime, I think, built in to most contracts here, I think. I don't know. Sorry, maybe I'm wrong. I really don't know. I just I just get paid and I take the money. Um, I think a lot of contracts will be like, may put in like up to 20 hours of overtime or something. Um, but then I will get paid more if I have to go in on the weekend or if I have to stay past 10 p.m. Um... How many paid leaves are there in a year? All right. So Europeans, I don't know if you could survive here. So in general, it's common for Japanese companies to start all new employees off with 10 days a year. Regardless, sometimes even of if you're entering it like midway through your career. It depends on the company, but... Yeah. So you like, you'll start with 10. And then if you work at the company six years, you'll have 20. And usually it maxes out at 20, usually. So this is not great. <laughs> what can you do? That's, that's, it's normal, but some companies will give you more. I'm not saying it's for all. It's just for most average Japanese companies, but actually on jet, um, jet was very special and I got 20 days off. A year, which is why I could travel so much on jet. Because uh, now I'm like hoarding my days off to be used at Christmas to go home. So it's not great. <laughs> Have I seen any game shows on us on TV? I, I, I don't watch TV. 
I'm sorry. I, I, I have a TV. You've probably seen my large TV, but I literally don't have a cable. Like I don't have cable, a cable or cable. I don't have it. I just watch Netflix and YouTube on it. <laughs> Are anime conventions popular? No, not like the US, not like the US. There's like, basically there's like a few big conventions a year, like a handful and that's it. Like, as far as I know, I don't, I don't go, honestly, I'm gonna be real. <laughs> I've never been to one here. Um, like there's Comic Cat, the famous one, and that's twice a year. But it's, they, I don't think they do it like America does because they don't really need to. Um, you can buy anime goods whenever you want. And if you do cosplay, most people like to do it in small groups or just for photos here, I think. Like, of course, there's people who cosplay to conventions, but it's not like, it's not like America. It's like a different culture, I guess, around anime, I guess. But yeah, I've never been to one. Uh, the closest I've been is Tokyo Game Show, which some people cosplay at, I guess. Um, thank kudos for you to doing YouTube while working full time. Thank you. Ah! Yeah, it can be really hard. Um, I think people don't realize how much work actually goes into YouTube. Uh, it's more than you think. Probably is what I'll say. It's more work than you think. That's is the paid leave off. Does the paid leave off count sick emergency leaves? Yeah, kind of. Uh, technically, like, no, I think, but honestly, I'm not really sure, but I think no. Like, if you have a doctor's note that's like, Allison needs to be on bed rest after surgery for a week. That's different. But in general, it's like people don't use their sick leave like as sick leave. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's it's kind of complicated. I'm leaving a job with close to 35 days of moving to of PTO and moving to Japan. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. That's rough. Um, if you do get a foreign company, though, I think they're more generous with PTO, like a foreign-owned company, from what I've heard. I don't know. <laughs> but I don't think it'll be 35 days. <laughs> do I have trouble with things like dentists or regular appointments? Yeah, so I do all medical. I do dentists in English. I go to an English-speaking dentist. I... And in Japan, everyone is required to have a once a year medical checkup. So I do that in Japanese because the company arranges it. Um, you don't really need that much Japanese for that, though. It's mostly like following instructions. But for medical things here, I try to do it in English if I can. But that's only because I don't want to really mess up something you know what i mean other things i usually do in japanese actually i have a hair appointment what time is it oh my god it's almost three i have a hair appointment today at five uh and that's in japanese so i usually do things like that in japanese but if i decide to ever dye my hair at a salon here i will go to an english-speaking one not because of the language, but because I don't want them to completely ruin my hair. <laughs> yeah, it's a language barrier, but in Tokyo especially, you can do so much in English. What is your favorite coffee shop to visit? <sighs> There's so many. You guys, I have so many Google Map pin thingies and I keep saying I'm going to organize them into a guide or something but I never do and I never will uh let me see it's so hard uh I don't know I don't know I don't know I have too many I just have too many honestly 
Uh, it depends what I want to, like if I want to go there to study or just to drink coffee with a friend, then that I'll go to a different kind of cafe. No, but there's so many, I don't know. I don't know. Should I make a guide? I don't know. I literally have a thousand saved things on my Google Maps. What am I going to do with my hair? I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know. What should I do? I was thinking, I don't know, because my hair is like thin. See, it's like fine. And um, it doesn't hold style that well. Like if I curl it, it'll fall out no matter what I do or how much hairspray I use. I was thinking like a 90s layered look maybe. I haven't had layers in a long time. So I, was, I don't know, maybe I should try it out. What do you think? And then I have these bangs. So I think I'll cut them a little maybe, like to here. I don't know. I don't really know. I kind of just wing it every time I go to the hair salon because I never know what to do. And then I just kind of ask them like, oh, what should I do? And then they like look nervous. <laughs> I don't know. You need my list. I'll try to make a list one day. No, no promises. Uh, strawberry blonde. I know. I wish I could dye my hair a little pink. I do. One day. I definitely want to do it one day. Um, yeah, I think I need more face framing, but I don't know what to do. My hair feels very heavy right now. Korean bangs would look good on me. What is that? Should I look it up? What is a Korean bang? Korean bangs. I don't know which ones you mean. Is it like curtain bangs? I feel like my hair won't hold the style. So I had bangs, like I had blunt-ish bangs, you know, for up until last year, I had them for a while. So I've now transitioned back into this and it's just kind of a mess. <laughs> Actually, I haven't been to the hair salon since October. It's kind of bad. You've been watching me since 10K. Thank you. Thank you. I want to live in other countries. Not right now. Although I do keep getting content about um, Edinburgh. Should I move there? I don't know. It keeps shop popping up on my TikTok. And then I keep watching it because I'm like, oh, so Harry Potter. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Do you know if my Fukubukuro segment was uploaded? Would you ever do Japanese TV again? So I did the I did a segment for Japanese TV last uh, last New Year's, like 2023. But and yeah, that was good. Um, it was actually like a lot longer of a segment than I thought. It was like 10 minutes long on um, nightly news. Like it was like primetime news. Like by American standards, like imagine the NBC nightly news. That's what it aired on. And I was like, <laughs> uh, and that was fun. And then we filmed it again this year, uh, but it didn't air because um, literally an hour after we finished filming, there was the big Noto earthquake. So there's no time for fluff pieces, obviously <laughs> with that. That's more important. So I, I wasn't, I was not angry or anything. Um, so yeah, that's what happened to that segment. Uh, I would be, actually I'd really like to do Jap, like I'm not interested in Japanese TV per se, but I'd be interested in making like more TV-ish content, like NHK world, that kind of stuff. I don't know, Japanese TV is like a maybe, but I don't really want to speak Jap Jap Japanese on Japanese TV because that would stress me out so much. You know what I mean? <laughs> and also they don't pay you. A lot of people think you get paid for like airing, being on the news. You don't, not on the news. On the like TV game shows and stuff, maybe, I don't really know. Curtain bangs, yeah, maybe I'll try it. Maybe I'll try layers and curtain, 
curtain bangs. We'll see. Um, we'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, is there any Japanese product you recommend or love? I know people are raving about the and honey shampoo. So the and honey shampoo actually doesn't work for me. I tried it before. It, it's kind of, it just didn't work for my hair type. I think it totally depends on your hair texture. And actually a lot of Japanese hair stuff is like that. So, but Mm, there's like too much <laughs> like Japanese the Kosei makeup keep spray it's like in a red bottle I like that and I like just a lot of the mascara the heroin brand mascara and eyeliner I've loved that for like a decade now there's just so much stuff I'd have to make a whole video I think oh the Fido hair mask yeah I did use that um yeah, actually, I've been using that, and I just recently switched to the golden Tsubaki one, but I think I like the Fino better. So once I use the, the golden Tsubaki, I think I'm going to go back to the Fino hair mask. Uh, that's also super popular in Japan and cheap. Keep up the lucky bag coverage. I know, I want to, but the videos didn't do that well this year. So we'll see what next year's like, because it is a hassle, I'll be honest, to come back to Japan in time to do the Lucky Bag content. Like it requires a lot more planning on my part, because, <laughs> you know, I go back for Christmas every year. So I don't know what, maybe next year I'll only do online. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, oh my God, it's three o'clock, guys. I've been, I've been live for almost three hours. What should we do? Should we do like 10 more minutes? All right, let's do 10, 10 more minutes because I do have a hair appointment at five. <laughs> yeah, should I put my cake in the fridge? It's fine. It's fine. I, st I still haven't eaten this and I have not eaten anything today. Do I want to collab with another YouTuber? I, uh, yeah. Um, I think the, I like hang out with some of my friends who do YouTube, but, and sometimes we collab, I think. Wait, when's the last one I did? I don't remember. I think the problem is my schedule or um, like, I don't, I'm not in the mood to film as much I, as I used to be because now I'll have like, you know, two weekend days and then maybe one day I want to kind of chill. And then one day I want to go shopping or something so it kind of just depends on my energy level on if I vlog now, which kind of sucks. But, oh yeah, um, look what I got. Wait. It's here. Come here. Look, it's dusty now. I bought this a month ago because I wanted to use it for vlogging. I haven't vlogged in a month. Uh, it's so bad. The video that's going to come out next is a vlog, but it's from February. And I just haven't had the time to edit it because work, I had like the busiest two weeks at work ever. The past, like the last week of February and the first week of March were so busy at work. Um, but yeah, I got this thing. It's a DJI Osmo. So I want to try this out. See, oh, look, you can see yourself. <laughs> So yeah, I want to try this out um, for, I don't know, vlogging and stuff. I don't know. It, I feel like this is like more cringe than the phone though. What do we think? I don't know. Um, I definitely will use it like for traveling because I bought it after the Nagano trip because I was like, man, I really don't like having to deal with the phone, the, like the, uh, the gimbal on the phone or whatever. So I got this. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to bring it out <laughs> like in Tokyo. I can't decide. Um, but I am excited to use this. So not the next, not the next vlog that comes out, but hopefully the one after that, I'm going to try to use this and we'll see. But this was expensive, so I need to use it. <laughs> Wait, let me, how do I put it back?
Oh, you want to see my skin beauty recommendations? I'll do it. I'll do it one day. I promise. I promise. I say <laughs> the hair reveal. Let's see how the hair turns out. Let's see how it turns out first. The harpist. Ooh. I hope the hair salon is close by. I hope so too. Um, I haven't found a stable hair salon actually. I used to have one when I first moved to Tokyo, but then she got, um, she had another baby. So she went on maternity leave for like two years. And I think she's back now, but at this point I'm like, I don't know. So I'm kind of jumping around. Thank you, Arwen. Oh, you think the DJI blends in better? I guess we'll see. <laughs> I look like a pro with it. We'll see. It is smaller than a phone, but yeah, maybe it's okay. I don't, maybe I'm overthinking it. Um, but yeah, it also came with like a little mic thing. Um, I actually already have the more expensive full set of these, but then like two months after I bought the stupid DJI one mics, they came out with the twos. Um, so I got the set with the two just cause with the ones you have to like connect a adapter or whatever, the converter. And I didn't want to have to do that. So I've got to use this thing. <laughs> What is it? It's, this is called the DJI, DJI Osmo. I'm not recommending it because I've never used it. I'm just telling you. I'll let you know after I've actually used it if I like it or not. A lot of people want to know what I think about it, but I don't have an opinion yet, so I'm sorry. It is very lightweight, though, and I think the video quality is pretty good. Like, it's better than the phone in some ways. And in some ways it's about the same. I, don't, I think it's better because the iPhone, the uh, the front camera really sucks on the iPhone. That's like the main problem I have with it. And whenever I do use it, you probably notice, but like in some lighting, it'll like sharpen all of your fine lines. So I look like I'm dying. So we'll see. When I last visited Tokyo, I went to Nalu Hair Salon in Monte Sando. Yeah, I actually, I went there. Um, when I studied abroad in college, I went there. Oh my God. I went there in college. So much happened to me on this like three, four month study abroad period in terms of like Japanese YouTube or J vloggers I saw, but yeah, I went to Nalu and then Rachel and June were there. Like, and then I, I was like, oh, and then I, I pretended like I didn't know who they, I don't know why. I pretended like I didn't know who they were. I did. <laughs> and, and, and then I asked the, the stylist, I was like, oh, what are they filming? And then she explained who they are. And I'm like, oh, that's so interesting. I'll have to look it up. Why? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I got the, Go, the 360 GoPro. Yeah, that'd be, I feel like I just don't travel as that much to make that kind of thing worth it. I'm not going to collab with Rachel and June. I think they're a bit too big league for me, guys. Uh, actually, I don't even know where they live now. Do they move to like Kyushu or something? Um, you started watching during COVID and your friend got to, into you, Tokyo. Congrats. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, the OG J vloggers. I started watching J vloggers like from like 2013, maybe. Or like, maybe even earlier. It was like back in the early, early days. Like, I mean, like when people weren't watching them, I was watching. I was watching them. I'm special now. You know what I mean? Like, um, back when like Michaela was like in music school or something. I think. I don't know. Yeah, they live in Fukuoka now. That's right. Did any specific YouTuber motivate me to start the channel? It was more like an, a collection. Because <laughs> my favorite J vloggers were like Sharla and then Taylor R when she lived here. And... Of course, Chris. And no, it was like everyone. No, there were so many. No, do you guys remember 
sorry, I'm revealing my age, but like in 2016, the J vloggers were more like a community, like a social circle. Does that make sense? So like they were all in each other's videos and it was like a, I don't know, YouTube was just like this back then in general, like with the British people and stuff. So like there was like a J vlogger version. So like, if you like one, you kind of like them all, like, you know what I mean? So that's how it worked. <laughs> I don't know. I used to watch Mime. Oh my God. That's right. Mime. <laughs> she had a baby, right? I'm so happy for them. Oh, Zo, thanks for coming the last hour. Yeah, I do need to wrap this up in a minute. Oh, I love life where I'm from. Thank you. No, his videos are awesome. I can't imagine how many hours he spends editing those. Now I'm a J vlogger. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, just, okay, let's wrap this up at 3.15 Japan time, because I do need to get my hair cut. I didn't think I'd talk this long. Actually, I, I thought, I was really nervous that, like, five people would come. So thank you all for coming up. <laughs> like, I was, like, really nervous. Um, do you think the job interviews are more intense in Japan? Yeah, for a Japanese company, like a normal Japanese company, there's basically, like, a set format that you have to study in advance. Um, and obviously if the interview is in Japanese, that's way more nerve wracking, at least for me. But yeah, they're like way more formal, I think than American interviews. Does that make sense? I love Taylor R, I love Norm. I miss the old J vlog scene. Yeah, I do too. I wish I could have been a member of it back then, but that's how life works out but I'm happy to be here now. And I'm happy that I even, I, I regret not starting in 2018. When I first moved to Japan, if I have any regrets, it's that. I, I should have vlogged when I was living in Gifu, but I thought it wouldn't be interesting. I thought I didn't have anything to say. And I had like lower like self-confidence or whatever than do. So I just didn't until I moved to Tokyo. And I got like a bunch of free time during COVID. So Learn how to edit, why not? I'd love to see you in Japan YouTube interviews. <laughs> Seems like there's a resurgence lately. I hope so. <laughs> I mean, I hope so. That'd be awesome. Aw, I stand on my own, thanks. <laughs> Tokyo Kuni, oh my God. That's an old name. What software do I use to edit my videos? I use Premiere, but I use, when I first started, I used the free version of D, what's it called? D, D, Da Vinci Resolve. And that was actually very good. And actually it was better than Premiere in a, many ways. And I've considered going back to it, but doing the paid version. But I really recommend it if you're trying to start out learning editing. I really recommend it. I've also tried Final Cut Pro before, but it was like too simple for me. I don't know. Like, I think that's good if you start off with it, but cause I already started with DaVinci, it was like kind of hard to go back to that. I don't know. Aw, thanks. My vibe is nice. Thank you. All right, let's wrap it up in three minutes. Three minutes, guys, we have three minutes. Yeah, YouTube is so huge now. No, I can't keep up. Even with the people who vlog in Japan, I used to know like everyone. Like I used to follow everyone. Now I I, I don't know everyone, even though I that's like all I want. It's not all I watch, but you know, like I, I keep up to date. I try to, but there's still, yeah, sometimes I'll find some like 300K subs and who's like a J vlogger and I don't know who they are. And it's like, What's your favorite comfort Japanese food? Maybe curry. Uh, curry or nikujaga, just like meat and potatoes. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, mm, or tonkatsu, is that comfort food? I don't know. I can't cook it, but. Oh, you've just randomly stumbled and been listening. Thank you. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't usually do lives. I don't know, should I do more? 
I don't know. I don't, I don't have anything to say. I don't know what else I would do in the future on a live stream. Other, Because all I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, thank you, Nathan, for joining. What will I do for 100K? We'll definitely do something crazy. I'll definitely do something crazier than buying a cake. <laughs> More lives. This is fun. What do I do? I don't know. <laughs> Aw, thanks. Yeah, I could do video games. I could play Sims or something and talk to you guys. I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to think about it. Um, live stream our Civ game. <laughs> no, Nathan, Sam, and I... Um, Sam is a friend from when I studied abroad in Japan in college. And we've been like friends ever since. And then she came on jet at the same time. It's blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. So Sam, Nathan, and I, um, we used to do, we did a pretty long Civ game. Actually, I think it's still ongoing, but I definitely lost. So... <laughs> Stardew Valley, yeah. Oh yeah, they're releasing a new update soon, isn't that right? Hmm. All right. Now it's 3.15 now, so I guess I'll wrap this up. Nathan, <laughs> no one wants to see you play it. <laughs> Final Fantasy. Yeah. Oh, th that's true. Maybe you'd actually motivate me to do the main story quest. Do I have the Japanese DLC from Sims? Oh, I think I... I think I have it, but I don't know if I played it properly. The Japanese DLC did go better than I thought it would. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than I thought. So that's good, I guess. When I do 100k, do a silver play button reveal. That's true. Oh, I really want that. How do we do super chats? I don't know. I don't know if I enabled them. I'm sorry. I don't know how to live stream. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you. No, just you being here is enough support. No, really, thank you. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to. Oh, I don't know how to do anything. Sorry, I'm gonna research more next time. No, thank you all for coming. Thank you all for coming. I'm gonna end it here. No, thank you guys so much, and thank you for the 50k. I really couldn't have come this far without you. So I'm gonna clean up my cake and go get my hair cut. And hopefully it doesn't end up horribly. <laughs> we'll see. And I do have a new vlog coming uh, tonight or tomorrow. Hopefully, no promises. I'm still editing it. But yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. <laughs> wait, no, sorry. It's this now. It's the, oh, wait, no, it's shit. <laughs> wait, how do I do it? I don't know. <laughs> I can't do it. Wait, I'm not Gen Z enough. Sorry. <laughs> Bye-bye. Otsukaresama deshita.